it's going to be close. It's going to be close. Keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it. Oh, you're gorgeous, aren't you? And still with the wiggle bit making up ground on the near. I can't handle it. Making up a lot of ground on the near side. Oh! It's a long point. It's the Whippet. The Whippet is the hound group. It's the young new Look at the owner's face. The face. <laughs> oh, my God, she says. No, not that's on the course, Ollie. No, no. My <laughs> word, he's a happy little chap. Oh! Dropped it. Dropped it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, 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 fantastic yes. win. This is nerve-wracking. Well, that really was an extraordinary result and a very emotional young man there. A wonderful win from Boffer from the United States. It's gone to the Akita. It's the Papillon is going to take the toy group. Hold on, here come the Wizards! Roll over Harry Potter. Have a look at the clock. Amazing. Oh, pick me up off the floor. Chile takes the gun dogs. What a star-studded lineup. It is the Whippet, I think she's pointed. We've been feeding Charlie the new and improved Yukonuba now for 12 weeks. Um, he's totally thriving. During the time that he's been eating the new Yukonuba, he's lost four and a half centimetres from his waist. This makes me feel absolutely so proud and really happy at the fact that we've taken the best care of Charlie that we possibly can. Me and Charlie had a race at the park um, and he beat me. He's never done it before. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the first day of Crofts 2019. It's going to be a very exciting day, lots happening in the arena, all the fast action, and I'm sure you're going to really enjoy yourself. So have a good day, folks. Hello. And I'll hand over now to Kate Smith, who's going to be the commentator for the first event. Okay, so welcome everybody. As David said, we're going to go straight into our first event here in the main arena across 2019. It's an agility event and it's the Kennel Club Novice Cup. But obviously, we need a judge, so please put your hands together for Hilary Bowden. So we're ready to go with our first handler. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you will see that there's no contact equipment in the arena at the moment. And that means that this is a jumping competition. And later on, we'll have the second part of the Kennel Club Novice Cup, which is the agility. So Hilary is just checking her course. She's all ready to go. And this is Tony Dawkins with Tiger Lily, the mini American Shepherd. Bacero, cross my heart. So these are the novice dogs. They uh, may not have competed here in the main arena before, but everybody is qualified to be here. So nice, fast little dog. Into those weave poles. They have to have that first pole on their left shoulder. Tony has swapped sides. This is a fast course. Get into that tunnel. Oh, just picking up the jump there. There's a, a left turn. Over the uh, irons jump and down the line, it's a clear round. Well done, 34-149. That's the bar, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great start to the day. Well done, Tony. So here we go with our next dog. This is James Adam with Willow, the working Cocker Spaniel. Devon Gem, it is gold standard. He knows what he has to do. Go, 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 Straight down into that tunnel. He's cross sides there. Oh, and another one. Oh, to have young legs. Into the weave poles. Nicely through there. Crossing sides. As he goes into the tunnel. This is another great start. Left turn. Back over the arms, jumps, turning left on that one as we go into the final straight. Let's give a big cheer. Well done. Ooh, 33, 4, 9, 
five takes the lead. Well done. That was James. Well done. Wow. Next to go, Nicole Turner with Guess. She's got a fan club with her. This is Working Cocker Spaniel. All the way from Kent. Let's go. Go, tunnel, 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 tunnel. So what we're going to do later on, ladies and gentlemen, we'll add the two scores together from the jumping round and the agility round, which will be here later on. And we'll be adding those scores together and coming up with the overall Cross 2019 Novice Cup winner. So make sure you do come back to see the second half of the competition. Yes, 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 yes. Really nice turn here as we go into the arms jump. Oh, that's five faults. Our judge has put her hand up. Five faults and over the final jump, 38, 3, 7, 2 on the clock. So if you see our judge waving at you, that's not a good thing. That means that the dog has picked up five faults. So next to go, Sharon Broders with Stitch, the Shetland Sheepdog. Utopia Blue from Maria's Shelter. So we're going to be running this course at three heights. These are the mediums. And uh, all the agility dogs have been measured to make sure that they're jumping a height that's uh, relevant to their own size. Oh my God. And uh, we'll be going on to the smalls after this. It'll be the same course. Over the arms, jumps two to go. Come on, Sharon, one more. Oh, okay. oh goodness me. That was a bit scary right at the end there. 36.507 is the time. Well done. Seeing that uh, last jump there. So here we go, Fran Albissa with uh, Bliss. This is a miniature American Shepherd, six years old. Got a lot to say for herself. Wow, that's a quick dog. Fran hanging on there. Over the wall. Picks up the jump left. Remember's got to get that weave entry. Oh, just manages that very nicely. Right into the tunnel. Tunnel, tunnel. Tunnel again. Here we go. She's going to cross behind, trying to keep that turn down to a minimum. Come on, Bliss. You've got two to go. Keep it together. One more. Yay. Well done. 36.693 goes into fourth place. Well done. This is going to make the second part of the competition very exciting because that means they're going to have to go for it in the agility. So it'll be a great competition. Make sure you do come back. So next to go, Louise Godwin with Letty, the miniature American shepherd dog, three years old. Hainan's dollar girl. Another quick little dog. Oh, just saw that jump on the far side there. So unfortunately, that's an elimination for taking the wrong course. So ladies and gentlemen, we have got a fantastic day planned for you. Uh, here in the main arena, we've got uh, more agility, we've got Hillworks music, we've got the police. Loads and loads and loads of things to come down and watch. Uh, and of course, if uh, you want to go and spend some money, we've got over 400 trade stands if you want to buy some early Christmas presents. So Letty's uh, enjoying herself out there, getting her money's worth. <laughs> well done. Unfortunately, that was an early elimination. Just picking up that far jump. OK, so next to go, Rosie Cavill with uh, Boo. This is a Hungarian Moody. Don't see many of these in the UK. Bob of the Sporty Heroes. So down to the tunnel, crossing sides, trying to get the best possible line. Agility is all about speed and accuracy. Into those weaves. 
Nicely through there. Get a cross again. Pick up the tunnel. And another cross. I think she's going to do another one. Yep. Left turn. Come on, Rosie. You've got two to go. One more. That's another clear round. Well done. 36. 0.447 goes into third place. So the last of our mediums. This is Luisa Mattier with Bo, the working cocker spaniel. Sagor Black Sedge. Waiting nice and patiently on the start line there. Good boy, right, right, left even. Verbal okay. instructions telling the dog whether to turn left or right. Left, left. Go. Down that long line. Left turn into the weaves. Is she going to swap side or is she going to rear cross it or bring around the left wing? She's going to bring around the left wing into the tunnel. Good boy, good tunnel. Into that far tunnel. Go, go. Come on, Louisa. Oh, that's very tight. That was a good turn. That would have uh, gained some time there, definitely. Go on, you've got one to go, the wrong one. Oh, that was the wrong finishing line. Oh, no. Hope you didn't hear that little swear, everybody. We'll edit that out. <laughs> Unfortunately, that was the wrong course, so that was an elimination right at the end. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, I feel your pain. <laughs> what a shame. So that was the, uh, <clears throat> that was the, uh, all the medium dogs, and it's actually gone up to large, not small, as you can see. So we're on to the large novice dogs now. Same course, different competition in so much as we will have a winner in each height section. So the jumps go up, the long jump becomes longer. And our judge is just checking that she's happy with everything. Making sure all the bricks in the wall are stable. Poles aren't going to fall off. And our timing gates are just being checked. And we're ready to go. Brilliant. So first to go, Diane Graves with Jive, the Border Collie. Combine away, kicks and flicks. So, Diane making sure she's in a good position to get a good turn on two, as we have a right turn there. Nicely executed. Oh, missed that tunnel entrance. So that's uh, five fourths for a refusal. So Diane will know that she's got to get as fast a time as possible. Does depend what everybody else does in the competition, as it's a competition of two parts. She'll be trying to go as quickly as she can now without incurring any more faults. So just wasted a bit of time there. As we go left on the irons jump, two to go, one more. Well done, Diane. 43.202 was the time. So currently in first place as the first dog to run. And next to go, Jill Matthews with Jimmy, the border collie, four years old. Touch and go, see you, Jimmy. Lovely tricolour collie. And uh, Jill says she's been competing for 20 years in agility. And this is her first time competing at Crufts. In the main arena, no less. So Jill getting all her blind crosses in. Looking good there. Turning left into those weaves. Remember, first pole on the left shoulder. Very nicely through there. Right turn. Gets into the next blind. So she's going to get a front cross in there. Tells the dog it's turning left. 
Left turn again, over the arms jump. Two to go, come on Jill, one more. Yes, lovely round. 34, eight, seven, four on a clear round, well done. Goes into the lead. So here we go, next to go, Grace Blackmore with Evan, the Golden Retriever. Gatonwood, Brusselois. Bruce, Hope I've uh, said that right. She said he's the happiest boy in agility. Look at that lovely smiley face. Grace gets the blind in there, but unfortunately just pulls him past the tunnel. So we're on five forts. Remember though, it does depend what everybody else does. Left turn there, into the weaves. Getting those right. Another left turn, crossing sides. Into the tunnel. That's a nice turn there, that will have saved some time. Just calling him round, two to go, come on Grace, one more. Lovely, it's, a, it's a five volts with 41. Six, seven, nine on the clock. Unfortunately, just took him past that tunnel, picking up those five faults. So next to go, Michelle Curtis with rhyme. Without rhyme or reason. This is a rescue dog. And uh, remember, if, um, if you're interested in doing agility, you don't need to have a pedigree dog or a dog that's on the breed register. You can register your dog on the activities register and uh, that means you can do agility and hear works music and obedience um, with the Kennel Club. Just go and talk to the Kennel Club on their stand. Very nicely in and out of the weeds. That was a good turn. That will have saved a lot of time. Oh, just swooped past the jump there, so that's five four. So he has to go back and do it, else that would have been an elimination for missing it out completely. Here we go, two to go. Oh, that would have been such a lovely run. But just picking up five four, 39, eight, two, one on the clock. So, next to go. This is Alison Pierce with Widdershin's Walrus. Herbie is his pet name, Border Collie. He's uh, multi-talented, he does canny cross as well, which is uh, a growing sport in the dog world. If you like jogging and running, uh, you can do that with your dog. So uh, Herbie's just picked up 10 forts there with a drop pole and the long jump. So we're on 10 faults as we come down to the weave poles. Nice turn there into the tunnel. Oh, he's just missed the, uh, so he missed the jump, which picked up five, and then unfortunately he kept going, so unfortunately that does mean an elimination for Herbie. Well done. That was a shame. Okay, so we're ready to go with our next competitor. This is Sarah Kitching with Lewis, Border Collie. Rookie raging racer. Brought her fans in today as well. I think they're gonna be cheering Sarah on. The commentary card says, just make something up. <laughs> oh, picks up five. Just resetting him. Picks it up the second time. Go, 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 so we're on five. Picks up another five there. So he's just missed out the wall. So we're on ten. He's a young, he's a young dog. He's only two years old. So I'm sure he'll be back further down the road in his career. But he's still got the agility to go later on as well, remember. 
That's a lovely turn there. Nice turn. Oh, we just looked at the long jump though, but we're okay. Over the final jump, 42, 225, and 10 faults. So, just sweeping around that wall there, unfortunately, picking up those five faults on the wall. So, next to go, Tamsin Grimes with Roots, the Border Collie. Phoenix Roots. First time, I think, at Crufts. Oh. Oh, nice turn the there, down to the tunnel, gets the blind crossing. Up the line. Left turn into the weaves. Oh, just picked up. He didn't, he didn't read the signal there, unfortunately. So that is the wrong end of the tunnel. So um, that is uh, an elimination, unfortunately, for Roots. As you can see, though, he's got no idea that he's been eliminated, which is lovely. Just to see our dogs enjoying their agility. Well done, Tamsin. So, next to go. This is Sarah Woodley with Betty, miniature American Shepherd, Vasilis Yabba Dabba Doo. Three years old. Down to that tunnel. Getting that left turn in into the weave poles. Very nicely through there. That's a nice turn as we go into the tunnel. Across the line, that's a blind cross we call that when the handler changes in front of the dog there. That's a left turn, nice turn there. And over the jump, well done. 38 one, one, zero. goes into second place. Well done, Sarah. That was a good run. So, next on the line. This is Joe Nash with Lulu, the Labrador. This is what Lou came for. And what a lovely Labrador it is as well. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, keep going. A little bit of a stumble there. Well recovered, I must say. That is a cracking turn there into the weave poles. And another great turn. Come on, Joe. Go. Oh, five fours, keep going. It's all dependent over the two rounds. Keep going, well done. Look at the time, ladies and gentlemen. 33.507. That was amazing. Well done. Just picking up five faults. Okay, so next to go, James Davis with Sky, the Welsh Sheepdog. Hello, Red Sky. Sky's going to bark his way around the course, giving him some uh, commentary there of his own. Nice into those weaves. James crossing sides. Dogs tend to jump quicker as they slice the jump rather than wing wrapping. It's a very general statement, I must add. It's not always the case, but here we go. Into the irons jump, turning left. Come on, James, you've got two to go. Let's have a bit of speed there. Well done. 40.018 goes into third place. Well done. So the jumps are now going down to small. I'm going to take the opportunity to thank our ring party as they spring into action. Uh, they're all volunteers that take, uh, take time out of their own day to come and help run the main arena. So we are very grateful.
So we're just checking the timing. So uh, as I said before, all the dogs are measured. So all of these dogs that you're about to see have been measured into the small height. So everything is adjusted accordingly to make sure that they are jumping a height that's appropriate for them. Uh, our eagle-eyed judge has just spotted a, a pole there. It wasn't quite sitting correctly. Thank you, Hilary. And uh, I think we're ready to go. Yeah, so this is Jane Anderson Armstrong with Jinx, the working cocker spaniel. Tottles feels totally tipsy. Waiting very patiently there. That's a good start if you start the course under control. Getting in the blind. This is another very quick little dog. Look at him go. Wow. Left turn into those wheels. Oh! That was a bit random. Uh, just uh, saw that jump there. Unfortunately, that's an elimination. Just picked up um, the finish jump. But uh, as I said before, absolutely has no clue. It's been eliminated. And that's really important in agility because that builds confidence. What well, a lovely run. What a shame getting that elimination there just before the weaves. Just read that as a right turn, as a flick back, unfortunately. Oh, oh. Hillary was disappointed as well. <laughs> okay, so next to go, Angela Williams with Inky, the miniature schnauzer. Aronel's mother of pearl. And we're off. So that was a good tight turn there. Very tight turn actually on the arms jump as well. Down that line on the far straight there. Left turn. Out the other end of the waves, into the tunnel. Angela getting the blind in, getting another turn in here as we have a left turn coming up. That's very tight. That will have uh, definitely saved some time there. As we go into the final straight, one to go. 41.847. Goes into first place. Well done, Angela. There were some pretty amazing turns there on that course. Well done. So, next to go. Caroline Dunn with Archie, the crossbreed, American Cocker and a Poodle. Don't see many of those crosses. Prancing Doodle Archie, his full kennel name. Encouraging little Archie around the course. Come on, Caroline. Yes. Yes. Turning left into those weaves. Nicely through there. Here's the right turn. And another turn. Gets the blind in. Oh, and another blind. Turn the dogs, turn tight. Two to go. Come on, Archie. One more. Yes. Well done, 43.639. Well done, goes into second place. Okay, so next to go, Kerry Munnings with 10. She says she's no idea what breed she is. TikTok, it's 10 to 10 is her full kennel name. I'm going to hazard a guess that there's some Papillon in there somewhere. But here we go. Down to those weaves. Nicely through there. Into the tunnel. Left turn. That's a good turn. Come on, Kerry. Turning right, a little bit wide, but we're still in time. One to go. 37, 8, 7, 5. Great run. First place. Well done. Well done. That was a fantastic run. 
First place is a great place to be as you go into the agility later on. So well done, Kerry. Next to go, Michelle Taffan uh, Dubois, all the way from Holland. This is Dutch replay. Total touch, don't stop me now. Go, 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 go. So uh, how you qualify for this event is at the uh, Kennel Club International Agility Festival in August at Rockingham Castle. And uh, obviously Michelle came all the way from Holland to compete in that event and thereby qualified to come uh, and compete here in the main arena. Getting a nice turn there. Come on, Michelle. Left turn. Come on, two to go. And a fast finish. It's a cracker of a round. The 34-9-2-5 goes into first place. Well done. Fantastic run by the Sheltie. Brilliant. Okay, so next to go, Tilly Ingham with Buddy. This is a Jack Russell cross. Foxy Rascal. And this is a tiny little small dog. Come on, Buddy. He's a game little chap, look. Down that line. Into the weeds. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Brilliant. Right turn. Come on, Tilly. As you can see, there's two of them handling this dog. <laughs> One to go. Come on. Well done, Tilly. Tilly and her bump. And Buddy. Clear round. Well done. Five. Goes into fifth place, 45 4, 5, 4 on the clock. Well done. So here we go, next to go. Emma Frost with Kip. This is a Jack Russell Cross Poodle. Skippy Kip is his kennel name. Oh, just made it. Well done, Emma. Come on, Kip, into those weaves. Wow, look at that. Very nicely through there. Left turn, that's another good turn. Got to pick up the tunnel. She's gonna get the turn in, just well done. Left turn. Lots of turns, trying to keep the dog's best line. One to go, yes. 37, five, four, two, goes into second place. Well done. That's another clear round. Well done. This is going to make our competition very exciting this afternoon. Make sure you come back and join us. So the last dog to go in the Novice Cup. This is Emily Van Dyke with Daisy. This is a Chorty. So I'm thinking that's a Yorkshire Terrier crossed with a Chihuahua. Daisy, my daydream. Picks up five faults there, didn't like the look of that one. So another turn coming up as we go down the line over the wall. Oh, that's a big jump. Into the weave poles. Come on, Daisy. Well done. Into the tunnel. Here we go, across the arena. Crossing sides. And again, right on the irons jump. Here we go, come on Emily. Come on Daisy, one more. Well done, by fault, 48.071. Well done, so ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our Kennel Club Novice Cup. Thank you, Hilary, for a job well done. Uh, a lovely course, I think you all agree. So let's give our judge a big round of applause. Thank you very much. And uh, stay with us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll very shortly be going on to the presentation of awards. Come on, Kip, come on, Kip, into those weaves. Wow, look at that. Very nicely through there. Left turn, that's another good turn. Got to pick up the tunnel. She's gonna get the turn in, just well done. Left turn. 
Lots of turns, trying to keep the dog's best line. One to go, yes. 37-5-4-2 goes into second place. Well done. That's another clear round. Well done. This is going to make our competition very exciting this afternoon. Make sure you come back and join us. So the last dog to go in the Novice Cup. This is Emily Van Dyke with Daisy. This is a Chorty, so I'm thinking that's a Yorkshire Terrier crossed with a Chihuahua. Daisy, my daydream. Picks up five faults there, didn't like the look of that one. So another turn coming up as we go down the line over the wall. Oh, that's a big jump. It's presentation of awards time. So, these are the presentation of the Kennel Club Novice Cup jumping round. And presented by our judge, Hilary Bowden. In first place in the smalls, was Michelle Tafan Dubois with Total Touch, Don't Stop Me Now. <laughs> and in second place was Emma Frost with Skippy Kick. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> there you go. We're going to OK, so on to the mediums. So the mediums are next. In first place, James Adam, Dev and Gem, Tis Gold Standard. Thank you. In second place, in the mediums, was Tony Dawkins with Pachero, Cross My Heart. <laughs> And then on to the large dogs. In first place, it's Jill Matthews. Jimmy. And in second place, Sarah Woodley with Basilis Yabba Dabba Do. So well done, everybody. Please put your hands together. It's Lap of Honor time.
Millie would be very quiet. She would have her head down and be really withdrawn. She's got Down syndrome, she's got pulmonary hypertension, low muscle tone and anxiety. Uh, since having Emma, she's totally changed. Uh, as long as she's got Emma in the vicinity, she's great. It's really given her so much more confidence. The worries that we had before we got Emma was that Millie would be kind of left on her own, she wouldn't have a companion. Millie was really scared of dogs. When we went to Dogs for Good, Millie was playing on the climbing frame. We were dropping treats down the slide to Emma on the way home. She said, I like that doggy daddy, he's just nice and fluffy, which then started their bond and their journey together. Which one's your favourite dog? Emma, if you have, have a pet that sheds, then you have sheddings. Here's how to defeat them. Verminator presents Emma and how Millie to are defeat very coordinated already. They're just growing all the time together. She's really in tune with Millie. Their, Follow their personalities are quite similar. To get rid of them. They uh, like their quiet time and that they love to, to play. They loose really hair from shedding really up to 99%. Well. Use 10 to 20 minutes per week. The Straight new stainless bad, steel curved, curved edge Emma follows your pet's hug. natural shape what do you do when you with skin guard features. What do you do with the tool gently glides over your pet's skin without digging in at the edges. To de-shed your pet, Choose the right de-shedding tool Emma can to open match your doors dog's for body Millie. size and hair. Millie has medication in her With drinks. short, gentle Millie strokes, use the tool to reach deep are. under the pet's top coat to remove the loose undercoat. This is where all the stubborn shedding comes from. Emma will go up and do a headrest on her when she's out of breath. She just supports her in The so Ferminator de-shedding tool works yeah. on cats as well. As Millie grows, having Emma beside her, it's given me and Chris a sense of comfort Grooming, to know bathing, that she's always got a best friend in Emma. And de-shedding means together less sheddings. something that we're really looking forward to. She just pulls the whole family together somehow. She, uh, Keep it that way. With frontline gloves. We'll all be out having a walk together. It kills together. fleas and ticks on the whole family pet. just become more of a unit. Plus, it's added protection, stops flea eggs that fall off your pet Fantastic. from hatching in your home. Mm. Don't just kill fleas, tackle their eggs too. Use Frontline Plus. Only you know your pet's individual character. But IAMS knows the nutrition they need for seven signs of healthy vitality, all with a great new taste and a brand new pack, full of character, full of IAMS. Since starting the new and improved Duke and Uber, I've noticed a lot of positive health changes in Eddie. I've noticed he goes to the toilet a lot less and it's a lot less smelly as well. I've also noticed that Eddie's coat is a lot shinier and healthier. We've actually had quite a few compliments about this from members of the public that have just come up and stroked Eddie. Another thing that I've noticed is that his energy levels have actually increased. He has to have a lot more exercise and this has also helped me out with my energy levels. Okay, a very good morning to yourself from uh, me, Nigel Davis, commentating on the next competition. I'm going to give you a quick walk through the course now, give you an idea. If you're used, you're used to agility, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're not, it might tell you. And I might get lost. I've walked at it three times. So start off on the Kennel Club hurdle. We're going across to number two. I'm going to follow this lady here. She knows where she's going. Uh, with a right turn and a flick back to number three. 
Uh, right in front of number three, you've got the weaves in the way, so there's a bit of a trap there. Obviously, if the dog goes through the weaves, they get eliminated. They don't want to do that. But, but they're going for number four, which is the entrance of the tunnel. So quite a turn to bring the dog across without going over there through there. Four to five, fairly straightforward. And I've got to remind myself where number six is. So into the one rigid tunnel, straight out of the other one. So a fast serpentine around the tunnels, and we're working our way around the outside of the arena. Across the long jump, over the I am's hurdle, and then we're pulling back for number eight. So you might see the handlers pulling back here. They're coming around seven to eight. I'm just gonna let them go which way they're going. Okay, and then we're coming from eight to nine to 10, back into the rigid tunnel on the far side. There's a little bit of a tweak there, a little bit of an angle. So when they come across from number eight to nine, it's not a direct route into that end. It's more looking towards the left end. So again, another trap there. They've got to pull the dogs across to number 10 to get the entry correct. Otherwise, we're in elimination. So, sorry guys, so we're going serpentine, serpentine again through the tunnels. So that's onto number 11, straight on then to number 12 in the right-hand corner of the arena. And we're flicking round to the left-hand side for number 13. It could be unlucky for some, but hopefully this morning it won't be. So I'll just let the ladies pass me by. So 13, we're into the weaves. And we're coming out of the weaves, as you probably will know, in rate, the first pole's always gonna be on the dog's left. Flicking around to the right. I don't think they'll look at the kennel club hurdle, but you never know. 14 to 15, the IAMS hurdle, and onto the wall. And then we're across to number 16, which is a bit of a pull through. So I'll let the guys come through again, because they know they want to work it. Obviously, they're walking the course to pick the best route they want to be. So 15 to 16, they're going to pull their dog in, possibly and flick it around a 16 to go back in the tunnel again. So some may stay that side, some may come this side. Be interested to see how they work this one. So into the rigid tunnel, and then we're coming out of the rigid tunnel, and we're pulling our dogs back this way to take number 18, okay? So quite a little bit of work there to do. Again, be interested to see how the handlers handle this area here as well. 17 to 18, and then the easy bit, two jumps to finish. Okay, so over number 19, and the last obstacle will be the Kennel Club hurdle, as you can see at the top there, with the dogs on. So, we'll be back very shortly with you, and uh, say the handlers just finalising their runs around the arena, and uh, fingers crossed, we'll have some interesting runs. Looking at the handlers here, I think this could be a quick one, quick one indeed. Back very soon, thank you.
Okay, so welcome back to the Heer, the Gentic Arena. And first of all, we need to introduce you, obviously, to our judge, the world renowned Hilary Bowden. Here she comes. I've known this young lady for many, many years. We've competed each together. Are you having a good morning? Uh, fantastic, thank you. Superb. It will continue now, I'm sure. Right, so we're starting off now with the large dogs. We're going to reverse order large, medium, and small dogs. The large dogs have 51 seconds course time, the medium have 53, and the smalls have 55. And, as usual, someone has to christen the course. And first to go will be Martin Reed. Martin's working spring, a border collie, and an agility champion as well. As you can hear, spring is very vocal, gets excited on the start line, like a lot of dogs do. So, let's see which way he runs the course. Hillary's happy. She's given Charlie the nod. She's given Rob the nod, sorry. So, as you can see, electronic time, we've also got Rob here. He's a fixture, Rob is. With the uh, manual timing as well, just in case. So, so, as you can see there, spring is almost springing. We're away. Nice flowing start into that tunnel. No bombs. Into the far end. Across to the long jump. Over the aisles. Pull through now. And we're working our way now back around into the rigid tunnels. Across to 12, into the weeds. Nice flowing run at the moment. No problem with the weeds. Good set of weeds there from spring. Across to the irons, number 14. Over the wall, number 15. Swap inside nicely there. Lovely done facing the dog. Picks the dog up. Pushes the dog round. We've got two to go. Come on, let's have some noise. Yes, 37.394. Obviously, they go into the lead. So, next to go, I should have Connie Sellers with Serge Border Collie. Could be Serge. Border Collie, five years of age. First time at Crufts. She says he's the naughtiest dog I've ever owned, but I wouldn't change him. Ah, uh, it's a Merle. I can tell you I had a Merle. Naughtiest dog I ever had. Super dog. They just seem to have a little thing about it, the Blue Mill. It's got a little bit of talent, this one, as well. So, Polly got the long legs to assist her around the course. A little bit wide on the turn there. Polly lost a bit of a split second there. Back into those rigid tunnels. Far side of the arena now, working up to number 12. We're going to full round now into the weaves. Hangs back, lets the dog pick the weave entry up. I'm going to flow in nicely through round now to number 14. Cross to 15, the wall. How's she going to handle it? She's flicking back through, picking the dog up. We're coming around looking for a decent turn. She's lost a bit of time there on the white turn. We're two to go. It's got quiet. Which way are we going to go? We've got a refusal there. What a shame. It was left and right, but it was straight on, unfortunately, across the finishing line. Unlucky there for Tommy and Serge. <laughs> Next to go, we've got Naomi. Kamida working Swanee. Border Collie, four years of age. And she says, I'm Naomi, my partner, four years old, Sunny from Japan. So all the way from Japan. I'm very happy to come back to the Crofts after seven years since I and Sonny's grandma ran here together. They would like to do their best and enjoy themselves. That's what it's all about. Okay, it's a competition. The dogs love it, the handlers love it. And that's the main thing. And if you go away with a trophy and a rosette, it's the biggest bonus you can ever get. So lost a little bit of time there. Just slow down a little bit there from number three. Again, a little bit of slow entry, exit there from the first of the rigid tunnels. Big sweeping wide turn, again, a little bit more time lost. Well handled, pick the dog up there, into the rigid tunnel. She's putting her legs on now, we're coming round to those weeds. Dog straining the weeds, yep, no problem whatsoever. Good set of steady weeds there. Fast, but can be quicker if it needs to be. 15 now, pushing round to 16. We're over 16, we're coming round to the right hand side of the herd. Pulling the dog back now, yeah, nicely handled. With two to go, it's gone quiet again, come on! 38.32 for Naomi and Swanee. Super run. Okay. Should have fifth to go, is that correct? It is. Dalton. Dalton Meredith working. Dust Border Collie, six years of age. Agility trainer from Ringwood. And this is Alain Lamberton owns Dust. Dust is a very enthusiastic dog, and we're both looking forward to Crufts. That's nice. That was where I'm standing. Obviously, I see things differently when you guys and gals are. That was a nice flowing movement around there. We rolled a pole there on the IAMPS. So that's five faults at the moment. We just possibly pulled away. The hand pulled away slightly too early there. And uh, Dust then following Dalton. So five faults there as well. Over the IAMPS, number 14. 
over the wall, comes back, flicks the dog around, going to the far side of the hurdle, into the tunnel again, pulls the dog back nicely with two to go, got some faults and a big round of applause for oh, Dalton and Gus. And next to go, we've got Dan Shaw working geek for the college, six years of age, agility champion, he's doing a million. This is a dog is a million and my best friend, represented Great Britain, the Worlds and the EOs. Okay, if you know agility, you'll know Dan and Geek. If you don't, watch these two. Great partnership, like all the partnerships are, obviously. So a big running recall. So as you can see, nice verbals there, nothing too hard. Nice soft verbals, gets the geek in, geeks away. Tells the doctor to go. Nice tight turn, lost oh, a fraction maybe, not a lot. We're in that tunnel, we're flowing nicely, we've got too many commands you can hear. Nicely, quietly handled, into the weeds. Great set of weeds, heads down, flicking around now for the irons on the 14. Over the wall on the 15, pulls the dog back. Oh, beautifully handled, beautifully handled. Pulls the dog back again, we've got two to go, come on Dan, come on Geek. Yeah, super run. Into first place with 35.124, super run. Next to go, uh, Steve Goldsmith, Steve Goldsmith working. Teddy Border Collie, five years of age, is the first time at Crust for both of them. They will also represent the Isle of Man in the International Agility Competition this year. Teddy always gives 100% and is truly a man's best friend. I like that. Stephen and Teddy are away. <coughs> so again, nice flowing start. A little bit wide on the last obstacle, but otherwise... Looking pretty smooth at the moment. Nicely picked. I like that. Bit of a blind turn there. First one to do that, as I've seen. And the dog worked beautifully there. Well done, Teddy. Round to the weeds. Sweeping turn into the weeds. A little bit wide, possibly. Oh, look at those. Look at that. Left, right, left, right. It's almost like a march through the weeds. Across the 15, the wall. Again, nicely handled. Beautifully done. Oh, we're all right. We broke the line, but we're okay. Bit of a wide turn there. Just gone past the end of the obstacle and we're over the finishing line in 39.551 into fourth place. If you don't forget this, I don't know what I told you, this is a two-part competition as well, so they want a clear today and a clear later on to be in the final. Right, I do apologise if I pronounce this wrong, but I'm going to say Kachikoa, Kamida, Driven, there's the name of the dog, Border Collie, four or three years of age. I and my partner, four-year-old, Driven, are from Japan. And a wife is Naomi, I think they've just run sunny before, that's the ones. This is such an honour for us to be able to compete at Crufts. There we are, so again, all the way from Japan. I presumably competed at the Kennel Club International. Qualified to be, he's picked up a five faults. And unfortunately, had finished off with a refusal. But they'll continue working it. You think you've come all the way here for this experience. It's a once in a lifetime thing for some people. Some people are here every year, like Greg Derrick, who's here for his 29th year. But you come here to experience it. You're working on a man-made carpet, not the grass. It's a different surface. They'll have trained this. Everybody who probably will have been here competing will have trained on a surface somewhere around the world to make sure their dogs used to working on the carpet. So, I mean, they're working well. They just had that hiccup there earlier on. Give me a big round of applause, anyway. We've got one to go. Unlucky. We'll see you later on, anyway, for the agility. Ninth in, Anthony Clark working protest. Border Collie, six years of age, lives in Lechdale. Runs a dog training centre in the Cotswolds. Won a silver medal at the World Agility Open in 2018. And protest is a homebred dog and of his own breed. Does a bit of commentating as well. So, Anthony and protest, let's see what they can do. Six years of age. That's a dog, of course. Into the side of the rigid tunnels, working away towards me at the commentary point over the iron hurdle. Nice, nice turn, flowing nicely at the moment. Protest certainly not many issues. With a good turn round to the wing. We've got actually just hung back a little bit there, stayed a little bit close to the wing. As you can see, a little bit of vocal as well from the dog. Protest saying what we want need to say. We're over the hurdle, nicely handled again. That was a super bit of work. And again, good tight turn with two to go. Come on, protest. Come on, Ant. Well, second place, 35.266. That's close to the first as well. Tenth to go. We've got Sharon Reed working Teddy Border Collie, seven years of age. 
This is a once in a lifetime dog. He's an amazing agility dog, he's a much loved family pet. He can be Super Ted or Crazy Ted. Let's hope Super Ted turns up today. He says, I'm a paramedic with Northwest Ambulance Service and also own Ted's dad and Ted's son. So, Sharon and Ted. Rush rolled the pole there on that one, unfortunately, just bought by a wing. So, uh, five folks in there. I've got to be honest, he looks a bit like a teddy as well, doesn't he? What a great coat. Wow. Working away up now towards number 12. And we're over, coming round to the east. You can see a big wide turn there. So, obviously, we'd have lost a bit of time if they were clear. They've only got that five of them right at the moment. So, so a five could still get them into uh, the final tonight if they have a decent run in the second round. <laughs> I think we've got a bit lost. We've got one to go. Give a round of applause and even they've got a load of faults. That's Sharon and Teddy. We'll see them later on today in the agility round. And fingers crossed they get a cracker in there. So, course rebuilt. It looks like uh, we're all happy. Next in, Charles Allingworth, we're an agent, border collie, three years of age. First time at Crufts, this is the dog. Uh, really only just started his career. I'm really looking forward to the future with him. He's won a reserve ticket in his first championship class at the end of the year. And he owns my heart. Interesting commands, interesting commands. You always hear different verbal commands, different body language, different movements. Everyone has their own way of doing it. Nice turn, possibly a little bit wide, certainly one as tight as the second dog that went prior. Looking towards that hurdle there as well as we came out the weeds, but we're all right, we're back on track. So there's a bit of a flick again, we're into that rigid tunnel, but here, good pull back. Bit of a wide turn, bit of a wide turn. We've got two to go, two to go with a big round of applause. Come on. So we just picked up a 5R there, unfortunately. Bit unsure whether it's left or right. I'm lucky to shine an agent. So we now go down to the medium height, so these are for the medium dogs. Don't forget, plenty going on uh, throughout the day in this arena as far as agility goes. And Flyball, Crufts, large team, agility relay, that's on about, well, it should be on after this, if I remember right. There you go, four dog team relay, that's always exciting to watch. And this afternoon we've got the Flyball, 3.15ish. There we are, quarterfinals. And it looks like we're good to go, fantastic. So, electronic timing just being sorted out, making sure that all works okay. Final few tweaks, making sure that the uh, poles are in the right place. Okay. We'll just wait for the nod from Hillary. Okay, Hillary's a happy by the looks of it. Yep, she is. First to go in, we've got Suzanne Bonk, working Barney, miniature uh, American Shepherd, three years of age. Uh, they're from Germany, all the way from Germany. Barney's a three-year-old dog and it is his first time at Crufts. He's a very special dog. They're all so special when we love him so much. So again, yeah, different jumping style when you've got the, uh, these dogs going around, so they're not as long as striding, so they can catch up on a little bit of time sometimes compared to the bigger dogs, because they turn literally around the wings. And we're working nicely at the moment. Suzanne may, yep, she's made up the top there before the dogs come out the tunnel, so we're all right. We're into those weaves. Nice steady set of weaves. Coming around across to the IAMs, far side of the arena to the wall. She's going to pick the dog up and she's brought the dog around that side to turn around to the left. Because that probably works better with a smaller dog. A little bit wide turn there, but a nice finish with two to go. Come on, Suzanne. Come on, Barney. Yeah, super run. Super run. 42.405, the time to beat now for the mediums. Next in, we've got Michelle Johnston, working bundle. Pyrenean sheepdog, long haired, six years of age. Bundle was a feral dog and was very, very wild. Sweet, but people still can't touch her. Uh, I think I've trained her. She, she would disagree, uh, disagree sorry. Uh, Cross was a dream and my ultimate goal. So there you go, they're here. Okay, as you can see, a little bit of a wide turn there. So Bundle has gone wide. We've probably lost a second, maybe two there. But nevertheless, they're going around steady. That's the main thing. What they really need is a steady run in the time that's clear. So then if they're going to clear then also in the agility later on, that puts them in an extremely good position to be in the main final this evening. And at the moment, this is flowing nicely. Michelle doing the job and Bundle also working nicely into the weeds. A lovely coat. 
So across to the Ariane's jump, number 14. And over the wall. Falls the dog, bit of reversing dance move there from Michelle, but worked nicely. We just picked up the tunnel now, I thought we were going to miss it out. Again, picks him up, Bundle coming around now with two to go. Come on, Bundle. Come on, Michelle. Over the finishing line, yes, well done, 54.30. Okay, it's a steady time, but as I say, but they're clear. Third to go, Harriet Hardy, working Izzy, working Sheepdog, four years of age. Uh, this is Izzy's second time competing at Crufts this year. She's qualified for four different events. Wow, going to be seeing uh, Izzy a lot, and also Harriet. So this is a medium-sized collie by the looks of it. There's quite a few about. As you can see, it's got that instant takeoff. Comes over a herd. You can just see its legs go, its feet go, and it's literally its paws going, I should say. It's that head down, and away it goes towards that tunnel. Head down again. Head goes up as it goes in the tunnel. Sweeping around to those weeds. Nicely picked up. We're coming around now to the arms again, across the wall. And she can handle it. Right arm flicks the dog out and into the rigid tunnel. We're in. I thought we were going past, but we're okay. Bit of a time lost there. We're coming with two to go with five faults at the moment. And across the finishing line, 37.864. Goes into third place for Harriet and Izzy. So, next in, Hayley Tanning, working Teal, Shetland Sheepdog, four years of age. There we go. So, Hayley provides herself, she's ready to go. Decent verbal command to the dog and the go release command. Oh, that was tight. That worked those wings there beautifully. No wide jumps out. Really, really tight. Over the irons. We're going across towards that rigid tunnel again. Are we in the tunnel? We're in the tunnel. Next tunnel coming up across to 12. We're going to pull around to the breeze. Good tight too. Yes, nicely handled. Could have been tighter maybe, you never know. Fast set of weeds there from Teal. And Haley ahead of the dogs, you can see picking the dog, swapping the dog around the body now. Nicely handled again. She's going to cut behind the tunnel with a better verbal. And the dogs come out the other side, pull it around again. Oh, you're all right. She's gone round it. We've got two to go. Come on. Oh, my word. Talk about living on the edge of your seat. Haley and Teal there with a clear round and going to first place. And if you imagine the time they lost at the top there, they're still in first place, though. There we go. Next in, Marita Davis. Uh, working Harvey, German Spitz, six years of age. Harvey certainly counts as a cheeky Spitz. This is Harvey's third year at Crufts. He's competed for Team GB for two years running, and this year will be his third year on the Team England. Well done. That's a huge, huge achievement. So, in command there, pulls the dog towards him. And they were into the tunnel. Up the far side, she's going to swap out, yep, yeah, swap side there, pull the dog around for those weeks. Makes life a lot easier when you've got legs and you can boot it up there like that. Just to the Iams. She's swapping sides again to pull the dog around that side. Oh, nicely handled that was. That was superb. Coming with two to go. Come on, it's gone quiet. It's a bit of noise for them. Super run. 39.335. Goes into first place for Marita and Harvey. Well done. Next to go in the mediums, we've got Heather McLean working Magic or Macca. Although, I'll come to you later on, don't you worry. Working Sheepdog, six years of age. So I bred Magic, she's a str very strong-willed beep. Okay, she can't put the word in. Uh, first time at Crufts, she's not been an easy dog to train. Her mum was lovely to work and compete in comparison. She says she's a full-time dog trainer. So this could be interesting. So, Heather and Magic. This year, this year, Working nicely at the moment. I was a little bit wide, but as it happened, it worked quite well, actually. We picked up that jump really, really well after the irons. Speed picking up now. Pushing onto those weaves. Good turn. That's where I am. Really tight turn into those weaves. Probably saved at least a second. We're coming around now to this pull through, pull around, and we're coming to the right hand side. We're in the tunnel. Come on. Flicking the dog over the hurdle. We've got two to go. Come on. Come on. Whoa. 36.871. What an amazing finish going on to the final hurdle. Well done, Heather and Magic. Next in. Uh, I'm going to say Leslie, okay? It's probably pronounced wrong, I do apologise. Uh, working Nikki, 
represented South Africa at the Agility World Champs in 2016 and 17, as well as the EOs in 2017. Exceptionally intelligent, highly energetic, somewhat stubborn, and very noisy. Well, at the moment, this dog's looking rapid. I spoke too soon. This dog is rapid. Unfortunately, a little bit wide on that uh, hurdle there, and we've taken the wrong obstacle, so we got eliminated. And you love it when they're going around making a bit. I can cope with that myself. As a handler, I can cope with that. It's when you get one of the bigger dogs and they're really having their bar up when they're going around. You, they can't hear what you're saying. At any rate, give them a round of applause as so they come up the finishing line. Well done, unlucky there. We'll see you later on in the agility. Next to go, we've got James Brown, working rogue cock across uh, Collie, three years of age. Local from Hinkley. So, locally, I've got too far to go. So, James and Rogue. So, there we are. Okay, the release command. And he's ahead, as you can see at the moment. That's just giving James a bit of a bonus. Gives the dog that bit of enthusiasm possibly as well. Pick up the pace. Certainly picked up the pace over there towards the long jump. Nice turn around. We've even got the Dumonte collar on as well. I can see it glistening in the light here at Crofts. Coming up now towards number 12. Again, James ahead of the dog. Plenty of time there to get the dog in the weeds. Beautifully executed across to number 14. It's very quiet, this run. I like quiet runs. I was about to say I like quiet runs from the handler because the dog is literally working with the handler. And unfortunately, we followed James past. Nice. Again, beautifully handled as well. Lost a little bit of time there. <laughs> Never mind. Five faults, 45.959. I thought we'll definitely possibly see them later on, depending on their agility run. Here we go. So the jumps are going up. So just while this one's being done, anyone here from Scotland? That's the quietest I've heard it on a Thursday for a long time. Where are they all? Are they on the way down stuck on the M6? <laughs> I'm sure it'll be louder later on. Always get some great, we get great support from everybody around the arena, but the Scottish, I've got to be honest, without a doubt, the loudest. Without a doubt. It's funny, I look at electronic timing now, how it's changed over the years when I used to be involved in it from the 80s, and I look at it now and it's like, that looks like it's something that's about to take off. Right, first to go in the smalls. This is going to be a quick one. Bonnie Quick, working Shelley, Jack Russell cross Collie, six years of age, an agility champion, kindest nature, the naughtiest dog on the planet. I like the sound of that. She's a heart of gold that would gnaw your arm off for a crumb. <laughs> she, she has nine cc's and won the British Open at Crafts in 2018. There you go. I like that. Gnaw your arm off for a crumb. So, Bonnie and Shelley. So, releasing the dog we're away. So, I'm just going to get up now, coming down towards the I Am's hurdle. Bonnie pushing the dog, she's got a bit of leg work to do. Swap him sides, yep, swap sides now. Picks the dog up on the other side, then coming out. Good turn, nice turn from that hurdle into the weeds. I know it doesn't sound, it doesn't look much, but again, that one second or that split second can be the difference of first place, second place being the final, who knows? Plenty of verbal again, lovely. Two to go, come on, Bonnie. Come on, Shelley. Yes. Fantastic. 36.539 obviously goes into the lead of the smalls. So, next team we've got Alan Bray, renowned handler, judge, you name it. Alan's been in a long time, a bit like in the days when I used to be involved. Working Taquita, working Cocker Spaniel, three years of age. Uh, says Taquita's live wire and gives everything to agility. Also likes to go off hunting and likes most spaniels. Her favourite thing in life is food. Another one with a dive onto collar, and unfortunately, we just run past the hill as we go towards the soft tunnel. Five volts, we can cope with that. We can just do it in five volts and leave it at five, no more. Wow, a bit wide, but we're okay. Well handled, Danny. Picked up well there. Picked that up well. Now he's way ahead of the dogs, you can see. Look at the speed. But slow down now for that turn. So a little bit wide. The speed was good. We've lost a little bit there at the top with the speed over the hurdle towards the weeds. 
So we're over the wall now, we are. Beautifully executed again into the tunnel. And we need some good verbal here. Nicely handled again with two to go. They've got five faults over the finishing line. Beautiful run. 40.092 goes in the second for Alan and Takita. Come on, John. John Clayton. John's in next. Working Mabel. Jack Russell across Staffy, seven years of age. So, dog in a million, he wouldn't change a thing about it. She loves agility and will run for anyone who has her beloved ball. I like that. Training her always makes us smile, even if it doesn't always go to plan. So, that away. John and Mabel. Nicely swapped sides there by John. Over the long jump. I'm working away with the in command, pulling the dog into the right. We're in the tunnel. John's got a bit of legwork to do now. He's away. We're in swap sides. We're in swap sides again. Oh, we are. So nice turn around into those weaves. In the weaves. Beautiful little set of weaves there. Coming around now to the irons number 14. We're on a 15, the wall. He's pulling the dog around the far side. He's got the wrong side, unfortunately. So he's picked up an elimination. Unlucky. It was something worth trying. He tried it. Unfortunately, it didn't work. Round of applause for John and Mabel, please. Okay, all the way from Denmark, we've got Rolf Klarskov, working Rocky, Jack Russell Terrier, little Rocky Roo. Uh, Rocky's a relocation dog. Uh, I presume that's like a, been rescued, and he has lived with me for five years. I have run agility for 20 years, but first time to compete, I got Rocky. We have participated in the EO three times. And at the moment, they're on a clear. Still, I missed the first three obstacles, as I was reading out all about him. It's so all the way from Copenhagen in Denmark. So flowing nicely at the moment. I think he was going to go the other way there. We correct himself, the handler there, uh, that's Roth. But we're all right. Okay, steady run now across to number 12. A bit of a sweeping wide turn, but we're in the weeds. We're looking all right at the moment. We've got one to go around now, the number 14. Oh, the, whole oak, the wall with number 15. We're going to go around the wall. Unfortunately, so we picked up a 5R, 5 for refusal. So, pulls round into the tunnel. He's going to pick the dog up on the far side and swap sides, is he? Yeah, coming around the... F I like that. That worked well, actually, for a steadier dog. Well done, yeah, five faults there for Rolf and Rocky. Next team, we've got Sue Payne with Willow, working Cocker Spaniel, six years of age. It's the first time at Crush, never been before. Not even as a spectator. And this is a dream come true. Well, it's my first agility dog, and I wouldn't have got here with any other dog than Willow. So, Willow having a little bit of a creep there, but we're okay, we're back on track. So, Sue ahead now of Willow, pushes the dog into the region tunnel. And he's a tight turn, nice turn, lovely turn, beautiful turn. Into the rigid tunnel. We've had a little bit of a think about it, we're in it now, we're away. We're coming up the far side, we need to send the dog now over 12, which we've done, we're pulling the dog around again, not a bad turn, lost a little bit of time there maybe. We're well, out of the weeds, we're coming around to the IAMs, we're over the IAMs, with the wall coming up, we're going towards the end, it's flowing steady, lost a little bit of time there, on swapping sides with the dog, she's going to call the dog back, she, what? Well, that's the quickest one to come out so far today, we're getting a bit lost, but we're alright, come on, one to go, yeah, Sue and Willow, got into second place, 45.285. Super run. First time at Crufts as well. It is an experience, I've got to be honest. Next thing we should have Sarah McLean. Sarah's working Milo. Jack Muscle, four years of age. And I'm going to commentate on the dog, and I'll tell you about her after. I thought Sarah was going to go over then, I've got to be honest. And they've been eliminated. It looked like she almost was going to slip and slide. Anyway, she's going to carry on walking the dog around the arena, get the experience in. Not that she needs it, but it's always good to get that buzzing atmosphere. Okay, it's early days yet, but we'll be mad later on today. It's pretty mad today, really, when you guys get yourselves going to the end, which is the main thing, that's what it's all about. We're here to watch the agility, and unfortunately, we've seen an elimination. We haven't seen many. We haven't seen many, which is good. Always a good sign, that is. I always think it's a good sign as well, because the judge then has set something up which is testing to everybody, and no one's going home with four eliminations on the day. And as you can see, Milo's having a thoroughly enjoyable run this morning. Come on, we've got two to go. Big, big, big round of applause. Yeah, unlucky there for Sarah and Milo. 
Okay, next to go, I'm going to go uh, Belmiro. I'm not going to do the surname. Uh, working B, Shelty, four years of age, but they've come all the way from Portugal. Okay, so again, all the way from Portugal. So, as you can see, lost a little bit of time there. Now, was that because the hand was bending over? You never know, do you? A little bit bent over, the head's leaning forward rather than being upright. This is quick. I tell you what, get this a little bit slower on some of the turns. And this is a quick little dog. Beautiful job. Into the tunnel. Bit of leg work now up to the top there for that. Look at that dog. Look at it go. That's a quick little shelfie, that is. Right turn into the weaves. What's the weaves like? Nice weaves. Lovely weaves. Shelties, I'm not saying they all bark, but you don't have to get quite a few of them do. Have a bit of a bark as they're going around. I'm totally enjoying it. Interesting handling. Haven't seen that one so far today. Hands back. Fix the dog. Come on, two to go. One to go, super run, 44.74 into second place, well done. And from Belgium, I've got Nico working Ruse, Border Terrier, eight years of age. And Nico says, I love agility and his dogs. I th sorry, I thought there was a handbag. I, I've got a funny feeling that Ruse likes tunnels. We seem to have a bit of a vision of that as we took off. But nevertheless, they'll continue working around the course. They've got to get that experience. As you can see, a vocal little dog. Vocal little dog. Got quiet now, it's unusual. Noise towards the tunnels and start picking up. Into the weeds. <laughs> There's always that one squeal at the end, isn't there? 15, coming around to 16, into the rigid tunnel. I'm going to pull the tunnel and that clip back to the tunnel. The young back nicely there, well done Nico. Two to go, big round of applause, unfortunately they got an elimination there. But again, we'll see him in the agility. And our last competitor to go, I do believe. Rachel Ward, working shimmer from Colville. Miniature schnauzer, six years of age, they both dressed for the day. I saw her earlier on this morning, she looks lovely. I might have mine done like that next year, I reckon. First agility, dog. Oh, my word. Well done. I find the dog's legs intriguing as it's running around. I don't know if you do, but I do. Wow. That's a standout from the crowd job, without a doubt. It's that bit of bling as well. I like the collar. Come on, they're going nicely. Rachel and Shimmer in the moment. I like to say too much. Commentators curse, as they say. Into the weeds. Plenty of verbal encouragement. Round to the IAMS wall. For speed picking up on that turn there, come on. Now, what are we going to do here? We're going to the far side. We are into the tunnel. She's going around the far end. This could be interesting. Lost a little bit of time. Coming up with two to go. Come on. To a round of applause. Keep going on. Yes. Second place, 43.917. Well done, Rachel and Shimmer. If I had a Blue Peter badge, I'd give her a Blue Peter badge for doing her hair and her feet and the dog. Fantastic. We'll be back very shortly, any second now, with presentation, please stay ringside. And next in the ring we have Crufts Large Team Agility Relay, look out. And presenting today from the Kennel Club, Catherine Mansfield, uh, the Covens Executive. Hope we have said that right. So we're starting off first of all, and also obviously Hillary's there as well, our judge. We're starting off with a small first, small, medium and large. In first place, Agility Champion Goldar Trail of Flames run by Bonnie Quick. And in second place, Pretty Bear, a agility warrant run by Rachel Ward. What a run. Well done, Rachel. On to the medium dogs. In first place, the winner was Black Magic Navigator run by Helen McLean. And in second place was Harvey Bird run by Marita Davis. Well done, Marita. And the large dogs, here we go, the one you're all waiting for. Agility champion, come by and away, redefined. Run by Dan Shaw, we're the winners. Well done, Dan, super run. Second place, very close, I've got to be honest, was Anthony Clark with protest. What a super run, he really pushed it. 35.124 gets 35.226.
On the 5th of October 2016, Finn and I were chasing a robbery suspect when he turned and attacked us. Finn sustained life-threatening injuries to his chest and head and I was stabbed in the hand. Finn protected me that night and saved my life. So my name's Dave Wardell, I'm a police dog handler with Bedfordshire, Cambridgeshire and Hertfordshire dog section uh, and this is my now retired police dog, Canine Finn. We live together, we work together and if you haven't got that bond there in the first place, you know, there's no way I could ask Finn to do some of the things that he's done. Nobody gets me like Finn does and nobody gets Finn like I do. Finn put himself in the way of that thrust of that knife uh, and in my mind undoubtedly saved my life. Backup then arrived and I was able to tend to Finn and, and find out the extent of his injuries. I figured that I may only have a few seconds left with my best mate. And the colleague drove us on blue lights to the vet where we set about trying to save his life. Finn's injuries were severe and life-threatening. The knife had an entry point just up underneath his armpit, very narrowly missing his heart. You know, I spoke to Dave before the surgery. It was hard to know how likely Finn was to you know, live or, or die. Finn came out of the vets three days later. I set up a bed in the living room and basically lived uh, with Finn side by side uh, in that room for about four weeks. To see him in that sorry state was, was just horrendous. And he'd gone through all of that for me. And it really did stick in the throat that there was no particular law to protect these guys. So we set about trying to see if we could make a change and that's where the Finn's Law hashtag started and the Finn's Law campaign started. So Finn might be the face of Finn's Law and it might be named after him, but it's too late for Finn now. So what Finn's doing is he's giving back to the other service animals who are out there day in, day out, protecting society. So Finn's gone from enforcing the law to hopefully creating one that will protect his kind. Uh, yes, in uh, July and August of next year, the 30th, 31st July to the 2nd of August, we are hosting the European Open Agility Championships in Rutland. And it's going to be a fantastic event, the best dogs in the world. Um, and uh, if you're watching and you're connected with a big company, we are Henry's looking actually again. for Come people on, who uh, might be Let's interested in helping us I'll support this event. So if you are, just contact the Kennel Club. Well done. Here is uh, Hilary Bowden then, no, coach no, driver no, from the Forest of Dean in, in Gloucestershire, no, no. our so judge, we'll been judging of agility for 23 uh, years. Horse first horse team to go then, white horse agility training goal from Crick in Northamptonshire, Warner Peachy and Mint, 10-year-old Border Collie. We'll get our agility underway at Crufts 2019. This is a family team. White Horse Agility, training goal from Crick in Northamptonshire. And Warner and Mint are first to go. Team event just adds to the tension. Away we go. First dog that we have seen. That tunnel at Brown felt might be a problem. No problem for Mint at the moment. Good contact at the end of that A frame. The weaves have to enter those up from the right. That's good and clean so far. Another tunnel, tight turn from there. Seesaw is good too. Just a bit of hesitation there, not quite sure. Fusel. And a few more faults there. Five faults for that particular refusal. Up and down over the dog walk. And completes the round, Grant. Yes, unfortunately, uh, she had a refusal, went around the back of the jump and did it from the opposite direction, so that was an elimination there. But this is uh, a tremendously experienced team. Uh, Matthew Goodman here, going ahead. 
and Mickey had something to uh, celebrate this year, got married to Natasha to Wise at the end of last so, year, so congratulations to them. And so, Greg, we, we have had an elimination already. Does that mean that White Horse Agility pretty much can't win this? No, on the contrary. Um, you've only got eight teams in here, and as I said, with the added pressure of all these teams going, anything can happen. You've got to keep going and keep as though nothing can happen now. Noisy dog this one, Simon Peachy and Peach. Third dog to go. Just look at the uh, clock ticking down there on the left hand side. Picking up a fault there, the seesaw yep. must be touching the ground before the dog gets off it, so that's why he picked up a fault there, and that's for safety. And here's <laughs> Natasha Wise, three times world champion. Natasha Wise won at Olympia with this dog, Pepper as well, so we're looking for a big, big finish. The dog can get very excited, but this is a winning combination, a smart combination as well. And as things down there, class is shining through. That's good over the seesaw. Natasha and Pebbles. I've seen Natasha a lot, I'm sure, over the four days here at Crafts again. Time to touch that right contact at the end. And a good finish from Natasha. So 110 penalty points picked up then by White Horse Agility. That's where the confusion came, and the dog went around the back of the jump and then eventually under it. And nice and steady down the A-frame there. Oh, one of the easiest decisions, I think, of the year for the judge there. So that team finishing on 110 faults, and the 100 faults was for the elimination. Thanks, Graham. Next to go, Springers from Huddersfield. Geraldine Gavan with Riley, three-year-old Welsh Collie Cross. First time at Crufts and also completes on the fly ball team as well. Fly ball coming up that later today. Bit of hesitation early on there. Going wide again, not too sure about things. That'll be five faults there. Up and down over the A-frame. Not too sure where to go now. Another big circle, five more faults. Have to enter the wheeze from the right. Go on, Graham. So that's two refusals. If they get three refusals anywhere on the course, that's an automatic elimination. So, and you'll see Hillary will be making a number of signals. A clenched fist held in the air is a refusal. An open hand held up is five ordinary faults. And crossed arms is an elimination. So keep an eye out for those. Dave Rawlins next to go with Freddie, four year old border collie. First time at Crufts for this combination. Cannot emphasize nose, enough nose, nose, nose. the daunting prospect this is going out in the main arena. Dave's first agility dog is Freddy as well. Very exciting both of them to be here. And a little turn and twist, and that's five. Faults picked up going through the weaves, Graham. Yes, unfortunately that was the second fault. I missed a contact on the A-frame, I believe. And again, another fault there on the seesaw that is starting to add up here. But the most important thing is not to get eliminated. So, decent debut at Crufts. Taz and Paul Thomas. Early faults mounting up for Paul and for Taz. And oh dear, he's, mess, he's made a right old mess of that one. <laughs> and this could. Listen, they get, they've got to complete the round. They don't, not too worried about uh, what they've done to obstacles and things like that. The dog doesn't know, Graham, as we always say, and they will complete this particular round. Paul Thomas. It is, and it's, it's all about keeping it fun for the dog, because to the dog, this is a game. Don't let anybody ever tell you that you force our dogs to do this. It's all about the game um, and the toy and the treats at the end. And they always take the best dog home. Absolutely. Amber and Emma Cook, three-year-old uh, Kelpie, and again that is an, an elimination early on, and uh, the dog very much doing its own thing is, is Amber, again first timers, and, uh, and learning with every single second, farm bred, can be a bit vocal this dog, but, uh, 
shout out about too much at the moment. As we come towards the end of this one. No, the, the, there is no substitute for experience, especially in an atmosphere like this. So as long as they go home and learn, uh, that's just a really positive experience for the whole team. So well done to them. And again, the dog turns away in front of the jump and picks up a refusal. And then again, clearly, the dog has to make contact with the white area on the contacts. And a further fault there for turning away. Oh, look at that. That is a demolition job. It is, but, but you see the way that the, the wall actually collapses. And that, again, that's just for the safety of the dog, so nothing heavy lands in one piece. Next to go, up and over Tigers from Dartford. Crafts <laughs> large team relay. Agility. Six year old Border Collie. Island. Absolute treasure. And there we are, just in shot now. You've got Alan Bray, and just to his right is his new uh, wife. Um, so again, congratulations to them. So it's been a family affair. They can go home and argue about what's happened uh, after tea. Oh, we'll talk about it pleasantly. I don't know what happens in your house, but you have pleasant conversations. Not My wife and I are here. <laughs> up and over Tigers are up and running with Louise Chalice and Island, six-year-old border college. 145 seconds, 110 faults leads it so far, and this is good and cleans up a bit of hesitation. Faults picked up. It's good through the weaves. Jump beneath tunnel. Through the so good contact. This is very good so far. The dog walk negotiated fine. In through the tunnel. Does the five fault. Alan Bray to go. And Indy, 10 year old Border Collie, will be retiring after this one. Just an amazing agility dog. Has won lots of finals. This is a very good combination. Up and over Tigers, large. And looking good thus far, Graham. Oh, and that's what they call commentator's curse. Well, I did say thus far. So it came out of the weeds before it had completed them, so that's five faults to add. But again, this team's still only running with ten faults at the moment, and this is the second dog to run, so you've just got to keep going. Very unusual to get a team event one with four completely clear rounds. So just nice and careful there on those white bits, making sure that the judge saw it. So we're going to hand over to the next dog, and I'll just talk you around the course here. They do one, two, and then they have to pull into the wrong end of that tunnel. They come out over the walls, sharp left-hand turn, up and over the apron, making contact with the white bits as we go around. Here we go into the weaving poles. They must go to the right of the first pole, then in and out until they reach the end. Into the tunnel, fast run onto the seesaw now. Just test the dog's confidence. There's no problem with that, making sure that the judge had seen the white area. And again now with the dog walk. Oh, nice running dog walk. Oh, this is looking good, Jim. Great round, Lauren Langman and style with a six-year-old Border Collie, and now off goes Matthew Rice and Fiji, eight-year-old Border Collie. She is retiring as well. Fun-loving dog, this one, but they're looking in very good shape up and over Tigers uh, from Devon at the moment. Oh, oh, you've done it again, Jim. Just came out uh, the wrong <laughs> way of those weaves. I'm not going to say anything about dogs going through the weaves anymore. But he's still going to be right up there in the final analysis. I'm absolutely sure about that. Matthew and Fiji completes that round for up and over Tigers. And up and over Tigers go into the lead, Graham. Very nice, good team round. And as you say, the dog was in the position to take it and pulled off, so that was one of the faults there. And look at that action through there. The dog just wasn't quite sure the handler was hanging back a bit. And, right, look, I've got it, Mum. I've got it, Mum. Yeah. <laughs> just waiting for the nod. That's going to take some beating, Jim, I think. So, 
Chaldick at four Musketeers, Laura Chapman and Frankie, working sheepdog, seven years of age. And uh, needing to be very good to overhaul up and over Tigers. Chaldick at four Musketeers from Salisbury. Frankie in perfect sync at the moment. Dash down, but it's okay. Tight turn to look, looking okay. The dog was scampering over that good contact at the end of it through that tunnel. There were five faults perhaps at the end of that dog walk. Missed the white, yeah, Graham? Yes, did. As you say, these uh, we make it hit the white for a reason, that's for safety. And unfortunately there, the dog going into the wrong end of the tunnel, as I said, it might catch a few, and you say, Springers are particularly happy to go into uh, dark places. But they have to complete the round here. They do, yes. So why, whatever why is that? Done, Just explain that. If they, miss a, if they miss an obstacle or don't complete an obstacle, um, the whole team will be eliminated. So it's really important to keep going. Seeing it through then. See, so that's much better. <laughs> It's nice and steady coming down the dog walk there, yep, nicely made contact now, they've got to uh, take hold of the bat and the bat stays in that box area and that's, uh, oh, we're in a bit of trouble getting the dog back, there we go, you can't have two dogs on the course otherwise that would be a fault as well. Sue Evans and Moss, five-year-old working rescue sheepdog, currently competing at grade six level so it's a very good dog, refusal picking up five points there though. Elimination there, so again, Moss and Sue will have to complete the round. And once again, uh, Graham, a dog making its debut here. It just shows. Uh, it just shows this is some stage for all the dogs. And it, the it does, and I've I've seen this dog run before, and uh, as I said, there's, there's a little bit of hesitation, a little bit of carrying the weight of um, the team with you. Um, but as you say, if they're back next year, they will be twice as good as they are now. Last to go for Charlie Cup Four Musketeers is Lucy Arathoon and Molly, rescue dog. Lucy's second dog, in fact, and Lucy and Molly, previous here, they've competed in the Crofts and Young Kennel Club jumping finals 27 and 2018, but this the first year in this main arena. <laughs> Um, not the quickest on, I've ever seen this one, but it's just going to go around the final tunnel club jump. Yeah, I mean, team competition is not about all out and out speed. You want good team dogs, and he's telling him that uh, oh, I disagree with the judge. He's, the dog said he thinks he got that. There we go, that Springer just not quite clearing the pole. Centre from Cheltenham, Greg Derrett. Wherever he has been in the last uh, 29 years in early March, he has been here 29 years competing at Crofts for Greg. Addict, five year old border collie, and very quick, enthusiastic, and faultless start as well by Greg and Addict. And team Silver at the European Open last year, part of last year's winning Crofts team. Slightly untidy going over the seesaw, but no faults. And quick again, slipping a little bit on the Crofts carpet. That's good as well over the dog wall. That's a very, very good round indeed by Greg and by Addict. Just about the best we have seen. Next to go, Joanne Tristam and Bright, four year old Border Collie. First time at Crofts for these two. A GB squad member this year, though, Graham. First time at Crofts for this dog, not for Joe, though. Uh, on paper, this team uh, you would put. 50p on if you're a betting person. Very experienced, and you can see that by the changeovers. They won't be rushing them, but they'll just be trying to put four good, solid, clear rounds onto the board. And you can see already this is going really well. No faults at all at the moment as they hand over to number three. This could well be the winning quartet to Jessica Clairhue and Beanie, five-year-old border collie. 
Ran at the European Open last year, multiple team medals, part of Team GB, and last year's winning Crofts team as well. And looking really good at the moment, Berkshire, the dog training centre. They have been the class of the field, and this is another exceptional round, no faults, and it's quick as well. Remember, 154 seconds and 15 faults uh, to beat up and over Tigers, and as things stand, Berkshire Dog Training Centre are well inside that good round from Jessica. Back and change goes to the experienced Anthony Clark. Protest six-year-old Border Collie. This was the winning club last year, and it's looking like they will repeat that success this time round, barring something totally unforeseen for Anthony and for Protest. We were just having a laugh when you said that, because uh, I was expecting a fault, but this team's just got five faults at the moment. They put Anthony Clark, really, really experienced competitor, to go last. He just needs to keep it together now. There's no need to rush this. Just five faults total. Five more to go. Well done, brilliant. Absolutely fantastic round. And that really is going to take some time. It's in the back of Marcher at the moment. Just the five faults and 145 seconds. Nine seconds quicker than up and over Tigers. That will take some beating. Three to go then. This is East Lothian Green from Edinburgh. Always get to great Scottish support here at Crufts. Gail McDonald and Flynn working sheepdog. First to go. Third time at Crufts for Gail. Debut for Flynn. Absolute bundle of energy. Have to be quick and clean. Oh dear. That's an early elimination, sadly. going in the wrong way round Graham and that's really sad but as Graham has alluded to earlier on Flynn and Gail have to get around the dog doesn't know that uh, he's done anything wrong either so it went into the wrong end of the tunnel twice you saw um, you can only be eliminated once on these courses um, quite a few years ago you could pick up multiple eliminations they've changed that rule quite rightly so um, and, uh, unfortunately, it's going to put them into a rock now, but as you say, they've got here, they've beaten hundreds of other teams throughout the year, um, and, and they've just done really, really well. So whatever happens, anyone who's competing here, win or lose, they can just be immensely proud of themselves. And who would want to be here on this stage? It is an absolutely fantastic setting. I've just come back from New York at Westminster Dog Show, um, and they run a really, really good show, um, just like this. But I think we can say that we're oh, doing the best. Oh, dear. Just, uh, just dangerously over that seesaw. Uh, in the Harkin and Murphy, the 10-year-old working sheepdog. That uh, just took a little breather after that and over the dog walk to uh, complete the round through the tunnel over the kennel. And uh, Murphy, he's a devil in. The lady lunatic, five-year-old uh, working sheepdog, and uh, an element of lunacy going into the into the uh, tunnel. <laughs> problems, isn't it, Graham? That tunnel, as you said. As, yep, as I said. As you, and, I and do the, pat you on the back. The reason the reason is because the handlers are actually running off the start line with them, so they're actually driving the dog. Well, in actual fact, what they need to be doing is just hanging back more slightly. Really. Adrenaline pumping early on, and that has caused some problems. Uh, great for Lisa, two daughters, Rachel and Sophie, in the audience today, among the stuck a large clan of Scottish supporters. So last to go for Easter, Logan Free, and Blaze, seven-year-old working sheepdog, and the community housing officer, fourth time at Crufts for Blaze, the first. Blaze is on. Just uh, picking up five faults on the uh, A frame, missing the contact area at the end of it. Seesaw, she's down, but it's okay. 
And the important thing here, Jim, is just to keep going for the dog. Because as I say, my favourite expression is, nobody's told the dog, it's been eliminated, all got faults. It's just about making it a really good experience. Yeah, just missed the contact at the end of the dog here. So we were, we were talking about um, the tunnels and the wrong end of the tunnel. You see, she just leant forward and pushed her right arm and the dog went in the direction. And there we go, too late turning. Oh dear, but as you say, he's absolutely fine. There's quite a bit of cushioning under this carpet. And uh, as you say, she's just make sure that he's okay before they go. And that's what we like to see. Two to go then, live wires from Preston, Helen Webster and Myler, six-year-old Border Collie, to beat 140 seconds. And just the five faults set by Berkshire Dog Training Centre. Excellent quartet that. What will Myler and Border Collie? That border Collie show to us here. It's a good, clean job. Slightly taking a little look at things going over the apron as usual there. So we can't afford any more mistakes now. And even oh, oh dear. My goodness. Well, they did say about this dog um, that uh, one of the nicknames is Missy Mayhem. And they did warn us that anything could happen. And um, once again, got that particular option. I'm sure we'll see it at the end of this round. Badly wrong. Nice contact there, though. Well done, Myla. Well Adam Westland, Hugh, for the colleague. Youngest member of the team, just three years of age. Go! Go! What are the um, pitfalls of having a very, very young dog in this room? Inexperience. Um, and dogs are a bit like children, they learn. Um, some learn quickly, some don't learn quickly. Border Collies, people say, um, oh, they're the best dog to have. They're very quick to learn, but they're also very quick to learn the wrong thing, so you have to be very careful with them. Um, but as I say, it's, it's an experience. They, dogs do learn, so after they keep competing, they know what's expected. Good round, though, from Anya and from Hugh. Just the ten faults. Karen Lampkin. And Flick. Most laid back collie ever, a perfect house dog and just loves agility. Very, very carefully making that contact area. He loves tunnels as well, and that's, it. that's the other issue with these eliminations on this tunnel. Um, they love it. It's one of the best things on the course with dogs. Looking at another speed, or middle section there. That's great jumping Very neat. Through the final time, of the Kennel Club chapter to complete it. Team captain, last to go. Zest, member of the GB development squad, and the youngest members of the team, also a three year old. And yep, as advised, a loud dog row. Yes, I think we're going to see uh, quite a bit more over the next couple of years of this pairing. Got a very, very bright future, you can see. Um, is uh, young, fit, able. The dog is very keen, responding well to everything. And the training is going pretty well as well, so that's really great. Well done. Super round, super round to finish it off. Super round to finish it off. Just totally mistimed. And as you say, the whole jump just collapses, uh, and again, that's for safety as well. Last to go in the Crufts team agility, Stacey's Manic Maxis from Worthing. Sally Cooper and Quiz. Time to beat 145 seconds and five faults. It is a real, real awesome task. Just uh, sorting out Stacey's uh, Manic Maxis getting ready to go. That will complete the first event that we have seen here at Crufts 2019, the team agility. The large dogs, the large dogs have to be over uh, five inches and uh, 430 away we go. Sally Cooper and Quiz.
first year on this team. Very pleased just to be here. Early faults then for Sally. And more early faults. This looks now as though it's all going to go to Berkshire's way. Berkshire Dog Training Centre, barring a miracle. And there's another, another refusal, and that means an elimination round never really got going, did it, Graham? No, it's it's such a shame. Um, as it says, it's the, it's the carpet and everything else that goes with it. Um, but that's agility. If, if every dog went round perfectly, it wouldn't be the, uh, the activity that it is. And that's, that dogs are dogs. I think that's probably a really good phrase that we need to remember. So round the first jump, that would be a refusal. They must take the dog back round to do it again, otherwise that becomes an elimination. So just getting her act together now, settling down. This is Sally Cooper with Quiz. And again, unfortunately, their elimination. But into the weaves, really important to keep going here. As much for the dog as anything else, it needs to be a positive experience. And then they'll be back to training next week. And I'm sure probably a lot of these people will be building this course and just having another go of it. And next week at training ground, it will become a whole lot easier. So Tamsin Grimes and uh, Roots next to go for Stacey's Manic Maxis. They will want a good performance to round off uh, this competition. I actually think they've changed their order. They have. I think we had Tamsin. We had Tamsin just now. Yeah. So we're looking at Ella here. Ella Hubbard and, and uh, the six-year-old Kelpie. And now Stacey Irwin Burns and Chaos, four-year-old Border Collie. First time they've qualified for the large go, team go. trufts from Stacey's Manic Maxis from Peace Haven. Quite an experience to pair this. Uh, expect them to put in quite a, quite a nice team round. It's not all about out and out speed in these team competitions. Um, trying to put in the clear rounds within the course time and then put up pressure on other people. But as I say, unfortunately, they've had a couple of eliminations this team. But that won't stop Stacey from wanting to do the best that she can. So well done to her. Yes, a good finale from Stacey and from Chaos and from Stacey's and Manic Maxis from Peace Haven. closest to us in the dark jacket and that is going to be Catherine Mansfield who is the Cane Activities Executive at the Kennel Club. And there we have the so winning team leading everybody in. The winner of the and the winner Crufts of the large cross team competition large agility teams is Berkshire Dog Berkshire Training Club 2. Dog Training Club. First to receive the rosette is Joanne Tristan. Jessica Clairhue, very experienced team this. It's like a who's who of agility really. Greg Derrick receiving his. And at the end of the line is Anthony Clark. There he is, Anthony. And the runners up are up and over Tigers. And the judge there just giving them their medals. And the runners up. 
Well, up and over Tigers. And there's Alan Bray. I think he's been acting as team captain. Lauren Langman, Matt Rouse. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bray, is she is now? I'm not sure what name she's using. Very, very pleased to get second place here at Bluffs. It's fantastic. Would be placed at all. It's a, it's a really great honour. <laughs> so well done, everybody. Let's give them a big round of applause. Uh East Anglian Staffordshire Bull Terrier Club. Um, Staffordshire Bull Terriers, they do get a bad press, but they're a wonderful breed, believe you me. One of only two breeds actually recommended to be with children. Um, they are also good family dogs. We even have some working as police dogs. You're going to see quite a variety in here. We're not going to bore you with round after round after round of agility. You're going to see two or three agility rounds, and you're going to see lots of basic training, tricks, and fun things which I hope you're going to enjoy. Um, it's a wonderful breed, as I've said. It's very sturdy, very hardy. And the whole team is going to be here all day. If you want to chat to them, you see them walking about, please do. Come and ask uh, you know, about the dogs if you want to learn. Come and meet the dogs. You'll see just how lovely and friendly they are. Uh, you'll see a variety of colours in the ring, and you'll often see blue advertised as being an extremely rare colour. It is, in fact, over 70% of all staff is registered, so it isn't rare at all. It's just one of the standard colours. We also have them in brindle, black brindle, red brindle, and pie colours. And uh, you'll see them all with their fantastic handlers who work very hard so that when the dogs come in, they do everything they want to and some of the things the handlers have trained them to do. So very shortly, I'm going to hand over to the lady who helps organise this lot. She is the secretary of the club. She's standing just to my right. And this is Leslie, who is the secretary of the club. Thank you. Thank you um, very much, Christina. We're just waiting for our first dog to arrive, and she's just coming into the ring. So the first dog in the ring today is Queenie. And thank you very much. We welcome applause at any time. Queenie is going to show you a demonstration of a new activity that's sweeping the boards that's called hoopers. So you can see the hoops, you can see the barrels, you can see the tunnels. It's a very good distance ball. It's excellent for young and old. It's excellent for able and less able. Um, and that's two-legged and four. And as you can see, you can do, use distance handling. You can run around up close if you want to. Um, but it's really good and really fast and furious. So we think Queenie's done really well. Now, Queenie, who you saw there, is actually mum to the next dog that's coming in the ring and the dad to the next dog in the ring you're going to see later. So we're just going to wait for the Hooper stuff to come out of the ring to make some space. And then the next dog in is going to be Jersey. Now, this is going to be interesting because Jersey is going to fly around our agility ring. So what we're showing you here is that Staffordshire Bull Terriers should be, as per their breed standard, active and agile. I think you're going to agree when we watch this. That's exactly what Jersey is. Now, she's a grade seven dog for everybody that knows how the agility works. And she's also a really fast and furious dog, and she's mum to some puppies that we're going to see later. So you're going to get a treat with seeing those two. Our breed, as I say, asks for us to be muscular, active, and agile. And lots of them like to be couch potatoes too, but not this one, I don't think. Oh. 
There she goes. Great round of applause for that, that round of agility with Jersey. Marvellous. And now coming into the ring is Izzy. Now Izzy here is five, and she's been doing tricks with Jersey almost before she could walk. I think when she was sitting upright, she started her tricks. So she's going to show you some tricks. Now the reason we're doing this is because, again, we are really proud that Stafford Gibble Terriers are one of only two breeds where the KC breed standard actually calls for the suitability with children. Brilliant little trick, that one, isn't it? Wait till you see her later in the display. She's going to get her to do some reversing work. And of course, she's going to get a treat with the ball at the end for doing it right, because that's really important. Now, of course, although they're meant to be suitable with children, we all know you never leave children and dogs alone together. You're always going to supervise them. But it is true, Staffords and kids are a great bond together. So Jersey's done a bit of work there, and Izzy started her work with us today. They're going to rest on their laurels now. So we have a nice little seat for them. Two of them are going to sit together. And we now have Jersey's puppies coming into the ring. So here's a treat for you. Four puppies. Now this was obviously from a very well planned mating. Avril who, and Joe who bred the litter decided on the dog they wanted, went for type and temperament as you would do made sure that they complied with all the relevant health testing. We have a couple of specific DNA health tests in our breed that need to be done, and some clinical testing too. And here you'll see, I'll explain who's who. To my left here is Tate, who's circling cones. Up in the top corner there is little Wren, who's going round and round her stall. We have Hattie, who's still living at home with Avril and her mum and everybody else in that family. They're doing some reversing work. And down the bottom here we have Olive, who's come all the way from Wales to do some creeping. And she's very good too. And I'm sure you are going to see a lot more of all of these dogs later. But of course, for today, we just thought it would be really nice to show some early training with a, a whole litter full of six-month-old puppies. Uh, oh, Jersey's decided she's going to come and join in. That's really great. She says, I'm not just going to have my child take all the plaudits, and I can do it too. So, thank you very much to puppies. That's really good to see. Big round of applause for the pups doing their bit. Of course, with puppies, you develop things slowly. But then you can up the ante a little bit and do a little bit more work with them if you want to carry on. So next, we're going to show some balance training. And we have some older dogs here. Now on our team, we do have some dogs that are KC registered that were very thoughtfully bred. We also have some rescue dogs. And Dodie here, who's going to be in the centre of the ring today, is one of our rescue dogs. So we're going to lay out our balance equipment. Now you've heard of synchronised swimming. We're going to show you some synchronised spinning. So let's have some spinning dogs, please. See if we can get them to all go round at once. That would be a great feat. Round and round and round and round they go. Absolutely. Some of these have only just learned this trick, so you must bear with us. But they do enjoy a stall and showing off and a bit of balance work. So having done some spinning, we're now going to also do a little bit more training. So we're going to work on the balance again. We're going to swap over the stalls. We're going to give them some other balance equipment to work on. Of course, the balance work will always strengthen their core. Really important if they are going to compete in any canine disciplines, so if they are going to be agility dogs or anything. Oh, who we have here in the ring at the moment, at the top end there we have Belle, who's balancing on her donut. At the end here nearest to me we have Paz, who's balancing on his peanut. And centrally we have Dodie, our rescue dog, who's going to do a bit of balancing on her balance beam. Uh, it's not very wide at all, that balance beam. It's quite difficult to get the dog to walk along it. And especially to balance if we can get her to do a sit and balance at the end. It takes a lot of trust in the owner as well to do these things, so working really hard with them. 
getting them to concentrate and also getting them to do stuff here. Magic, well done. Smashing balance, Dodie. Nice round of applause for that lot. Really working on the, on the body work. And then of course, when you've done all that hard work and made sure your dog's muscles are well warmed up, if you're really lucky, you can then compete like our mighty mouse does. So next in the ring here, we have Mouse. He's um, dad to Jersey, who you saw earlier. Believe it or not, he's 10 years old. And he's pretty fast. So again, he's gonna demonstrate the active, the active part of our claws. Um, now you may have seen Mouse, or any of Joe's dogs, or indeed some of the others of our dogs. They often take part in any media stuff, so you might have seen them on the TV. I think Mouse has been in EastEnders in the past. Um, they love to perform, obviously, these dogs. And this dog also has been shown, and in his time has won two reserve CCs. He also has an agility warrant. So he is, in fact, the only Staffordshire Bull Terrier, to our knowledge, in the UK, that has a junior warrant and an agility warrant gold. And he is our Java Wolf Mighty Mouse. Marvellous, big round of applause for Mouse. Thank you very much. Now, next into the ring, we're gonna have a couple of the dogs back to show some obedience exercises, because some of them have been working um, with Good Citizen staff. But to introduce this today, we're going to bring in Ali Taylor. Now, Ali, you might have noticed, standing in the wings here. Um, she works for Battersea, and I'm going to hand over to her to tell you about this bit. Well, I'd like to say a big thank you to the display team, because they work tirelessly up and down the country, showing education and showing what staffies can really do. And they are a big, big support as well to rescue. So, a big well done, guys. Right, so I'm going to talk about a few of these dogs here in the middle. First up, we have Tracy and Belle, who's in the far corner. And Belle has her gold good citizen. As well as that, what we have got is Tracy is a diabetic. And literally what happens is Belle alerts Tracy when her blood levels are either high or very low. So. Belle has actually saved Tracy's life on more than one occasion. So that, to me, deserves a big, massive clap. In the middle, we have Danny and Lewis. And Lewis is 11 years old. And he's a rescue. So well done, Danny. Um, you can see Lewis on the Stafford stand um, over the weekend, but we also need to give this lad a big massive cheer because it's going to be his last performance at Crufts. He's taken a bit of a retirement and he's going to have his feet up. And last, we have the lovely Kelly and Az. Again, a gold citizen dog and will be appearing over the weekend in the main arena and on the Stafford uh, agility display as well. So a big massive well done to everyone and thank you for inviting me. So thank you very much to Ali for filling in for that part. We couldn't really do it without her. Normally we would have had her and Squirt, but unfortunately Squirt, her lovely rescue dog, is ageing a bit, so she's resting on her laurels. Now last year you might remember young Izzy, who you saw earlier, ran Dakota, her own dog. Now I think I'm going to be wasting my time talking to you because you're not going to listen. But literally today, Izzy is going to bring Milo in. Now Milo is a Labrador Stafford cross. It will give us a little chance to talk about a lot of the bull breed crosses that are in rescue. And sometimes for us as a breed, that's a problem because a lot of the dogs that do get pulled out in media are described as the generic Staffy, when in fact a lot of them are crossbred. Um, but say, this is where I'm gonna be wasting my time talking because you will not listen because Izzy is gonna take this dog all the way around the ring on her own. So I think I'll just sit and let you do it, watch. Oh, 
Obviously, it's a little bit much for Milo, because this is a big ring. There's just been a whole load of dogs in and sniffing. But I have to tell you, as a very proud team leader, that last weekend, Izzy and Milo actually competed in agility, and believe it or not, got three clear rounds. That is phenomenal. Izzy's five years old. What do you think? Is she a handler of the future? <laughs> Nearly finished, Milo. Oh, he was doing ever so well. He needs to listen to you, Izzy, doesn't he? Let him just finish his little piece. I need to get out of the way before I'm Milo'd. She said, OK, Milo, it's time to go. Fabulous. Bring the house down for Izzy and Milo. That was fantastic. So to finish up today, we're going to give you a little bit more comedy because Staffordshire Bull Terriers do like to bring some comedy into your life. If ever you've lived with one, you'll know exactly what I mean. Um, now, in the past, you may have seen um, Blake being... <laughs> our magical act. Well, he's decided he'd like to do an escapology act for you today. So I think today we may well rename him Houndini, if you'll excuse the pun. Now this is his girlfriend Nala, and we've popped her away in her crate. She's going to be padlocked in, very securely. He's watching and wagging his tail. No way out. Combination padlock there as well. Make it as difficult as possible. So now we're going to do the same with Blake. Oh, sorry, Houndini. Your girl is crying. Lock that door. Padlock securely, Darren. Spin those dials. Securely locked. Cover with the fabulous golden cloth. And now we need to see if he really can escape. So what do we reckon? How long do we think? One, two, three. <laughs> escape dog. But that's obviously only half the trick. Can he release the girl? How are we gonna do this one? Pressure's on. Well done. Hooray, he's saved the girl. So, let's see. Can Blake take a bow? Ooh, we maybe get two of them having a bow. Oh, he's going to go off for a wander now. Take a bow, Blake. And we just need one follow-up for him. A one, a two, a three. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's ending the demonstration for today. So I'd just like to ask you for a round of applause for the wonderful display team from the East Anglian Staffordshire Bull Terrier Club. Thank you for coming. We hope to see you again next year. As I've said, if you want to talk to any of these people, please come back and see us later on. Thank you, gang. Thank you. You've been a good crowd. Come on, folks, put your hands together. It's the East Anglian Staffordshire Bull Terrier Display Team. What a great display, as usual, just for us here at Crofts.
So me and Ranta have been deployed once to Afghanistan, but we've also been teamed up for four years prior to that. My name's Private Hampson and this is my military working dog, Lance. When I came back, I was, got reposted, so I was going to leave Germany to go out to Cyprus and Lance wasn't going to come with me, so I had to try and argue and persuade my Sergeant Major to release him, to let him come out with me. So then he managed to come out with me and go got to share another experience with me, Doug, before he retired. I'd describe Lance as a very narrow and chilled out character. He's loving, but loves working as well. Working hard. Training that me and Lance went through for the start was, so I finished my AS course in 2014, November, and I had to select a dog to go on to Afghan with. And I got wind of Lance last minute. We clicked straight away. Our bond came really close once we started working together. We, we got more jobs fired our way because of like, how good we worked as a team. So like, we always get told like the dog's always a bit of kit, uh, but obviously when you start loving the dog and the amount of hours and time and effort you put into the dog, you, just, you can't see the dog in that way. As well as searching and help find weapons and explosives, he also boosts the morale and the spirit of uh, the whole team. When he came up to retirement and he's worked hard for like, servicemen and women, and he worked hard overseas in Afghanistan and he's my best friend. It's my turn to give something back to him. to just support you in so many different ways. What do you do when you come home to Sienna? What do you do with her? I cuddle her. You give a big cuddle, don't you? Big cuddle, like this. My name's Ollie and this is Snoopy. Ollie became really, really poorly. He was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastemic leukaemia. You know, Ollie was three and a half. And then they told us that the treatment for leukaemia was three and a half years. Snoopy's just been the constant friend that Ollie couldn't have anywhere else, really. He normally cuddles up next to me without me asking him. So that kind of tells me that he's my best friend. My name is Sarah, and this is my rescue dog, Ringo. When I first got him, although I knew he was a blood donor, I didn't think he would be as loving and as sociable as he is. It's just amazing that animals can save lives as humans can with blood. All those donations that he's done, the impact that he will have had on other animals' lives, he's made me so proud. He's just one in a million, he really is. My name's Private Hampson and this is my military working dog, Lance. Our bond came really close once we started to work together and we got more jobs fired our way. Like, we always get told like the dog's always a bit of kit, uh, but when you start loving the dog, you can't see the dog in that way. When he came up to retirement and he's worked hard for like, servicemen and women and he worked hard overseas in Afghanistan and he's my best friend. It's my turn to give something back to him. Well, one of them great stories there, and uh, really heart-rending stories, and I hope you will uh, support that competition and log on and uh, place your vote ready for the presentation. Now, I did say it was activities, and we've got some samples here of all the activities of the Camera Club. I'm going to introduce them before the start. The group in the middle here on the hill, we're to music people, and, that, and their uh, team, team leader there is Andorizio with her group there. They're going to show us some of the hill, we're to music. Just behind them on the left, my left hand wall, we've got bloodhounds. Now, I don't know a lot about bloodhounds, so I'm sure we're all going to listen intently to Leo, who's going to tell us all about that. In the top right hand corner here, we've got the obedience and rally people. They're going to show us all about the obedience. Again, you can go up to Hall 3 and speak to some of the obedience people yourself if you'd like to. And we're going to finish with the working trial section. 
And if you don't know what it is, you soon will, because Stan Ford's down there to tell us all about it. So I think it's, uh, we're due to start now, so it's on to Anderizio and the team. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Can I introduce you to the Dog Activities Here Work to Music team? This team has gathered from around the country, and they're putting together a routine for you. It's uh, to the greatest showman. So hopefully, things will go well, and you'll get to see some Here Work to Music and some freestyle. Walking weave. Walking weave, so they're showing a bit of weaving. Freestyle now, so they can do whatever they like. And they're going to get ready for a bit of heel work. Step. Step. Up step. Up step. 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 And then it's crossing. And then they're going to do a bit more freestyle. And they're going to get ready for a big gallop. But we've given two people the time off from the gallop. And off they go. Go. Got Janice here. And young Gareth down the bottom there. And now they're getting ready for the running man. Go! And running man back again. And then they're going to do some more freestyle. Come Phoenix, come around. Come around. And they're ready for another gallop. Go! We got little Gareth here, all the way from Scotland. And they're going to get ready for a, a bit of a walking weave again. Look how happy these dogs are. Wonderful. Look at that beautiful dog in the middle. This beautiful pointer. And then they're going to ready to do some step, skip walk now. Skip step. Skip step. Oh, well done. This has worked much better than our rehearsal, folks. Bit of freestyle. Oh, sit. Paddle. And it's the end card. Thank you, folks. Please give a round of applause to my team. And I'm going to pass you over to Leo and the Bloodhounds. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to our Bloodhound representation for dog activities this year. We've got uh, Chris Kane and his wife Debbie and uh, their apprentice whipper in for the Four Shires Bloodhounds Grace and they are here to represent the Four Shires Bloodhound Pack. 
who hunt the clean boot, which is the scent of a human being, exactly the same as the bloodhounds that compete at championship bloodhound trials under the umbrella of the Kennel Club. The difference being, these are an equestrian sport. They have between uh, 25 to sort of 35, 40 hounds in kennel, and they meet on a Sunday, and a huge following, particularly by the, uh, as I say, it's an equestrian sport by the mounted uh, field that comes out, but they do exactly the same as the bloodhounds that hunt at bloodhound trials under the working trials regulations under the umbrella of the kennel club, only in a much larger But the microphone seems to have gone. Anyhow, we've got it back now. But uh, Chris and Debbie Kane put a lot of effort into their hounds. Lovely old breed and uh, have a fantastic history going back hundreds of years. They were one of the earliest breeds to come under the uh, umbrella of the Kennel Club, along with the gun dogs when the Kennel Club was formed uh, and produced bloodhound trials. Working trial dogs only at one point in time, long before they became a show dog. They are a dual purpose breed and you can either show or work them at trials or do whichever you like. The four shires based in the Nottinghamshire Derbyshire area of the UK do have hounds registered at the Kennel Club and their main objective is to produce hounds that look like bloodhounds that are fit and healthy and as you can see from the ones here today, we've got the black and tan one, Bailey, who's three and a half. Then we've got Hunter, who's 18 months old, the blanket black. And then we've got Isaac, who's just over seven months old and uh, who's actually put up a very good performance here today because it must be quite strange for him. Anything you would like to know about these hounds, please come and see us at the stand at Dog Activities and we'll tell you all that you need to know about whether you want to be involved with a pack of bloodhounds, which is quite fashionable now, or whether you prefer to own your own hound and work it at bloodhound trials. Ladies and gentlemen, the representatives from the Four Shires Bloodhounds, thank you very much. We now go over to uh, Claire with obedience. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. We're going to give you a brief overview of obedience now. You notice we have some equipment coming into the ring. This is for a send-away exercise. And we have our golden retriever over here being prepared. So this is Bradley. He very much enjoys this exercise. You can see how keen he is. So Sue is pointing him to the area. We just move our assistant out of the way. OK, so you notice he's being pointed to the area. He needs to leave the handler at speed and lie down in the area. That was lovely. Now, this is the second part of the exercise, which is the recall. So he has to wait there until he's called back to the handler. There he goes. He gets the call. Back into heel work. And we finish with a halt. What about that, ladies and gentlemen? That's an excellent start. So now let's welcome the rest of the team into the arena. And we're starting off with our gorgeous little dachshund here. This is little Frankie. And she's showing us a circle of heel work, which is how we start our heel work exercise. And you can see how excited she is, bouncing around, looking happy. And then when she's finished, she gets lots of praise and a little treat. There we go, well done. So now we're going to look at these two dogs over here. So off we go, Vicky and Moira. And they're showing us the next stage of the heel work. So you notice here we have one dog on the lead, well, both of them actually on the lead. And they're adding in a turn now. That was an about turn. That's gorgeous. So now we're moving on to the next stage and we have Bradley and Frankie here and they're doing turns. Now, what you won't realize at this level, folks, not only are the turns more complicated, but there are no commands going on. So the dog has to follow the body language and the footwork of the handler, and obviously, all the preparation and training that's gone in to get 
to this level. Handlers halt. What about that, folks? Let's give these some encouragement. OK, so now we're moving on to recalls. OK, so we've got Dupe over here, the Border Collie. And we've got Phoebe, our lovely working beardy. And they're showing us something called a novice recall. So the dog has to come off the lead. They're asked to wait in position. The handlers move off away from them. Handlers about turn. And call your dogs. Now this is quite unusual, folks, because normally in obedience, it's just one dog and handler at a time. And finish. There we are, well done you two, good job. So now we've got another two dogs. So let's just move Vicky down this way, that's it. So we've got little and large now, ladies and gentlemen. And to let you into a little secret, these two dogs absolutely love each other and train together all the time. Joanne's keeping her fingers crossed. She's still there, Jo. Here she comes. Isn't she adorable, eh? And a finish. Well done, you two. Good job. OK, so now we're going to have an A recall. So this is the next stage of a recall. So again, the dog comes off the lead. And we're using our other Frankie here. So Mary is walking off. And she's going to call the dog. Now you notice there she's doing some heel work just on her own as a handler. And a lovely, speedy recall back into heel work position and a halt. You might recognize this lady, by the way. Let's hear it for Mary Ray with Frankie. Oh, you've got some fans in here, Mary. OK, so now we're moving on to distance control. And here's our Bradley. So this involves three positions, the sit, the stand, and the down. The dog is left in position, the handler walks away, they turn and face the dog, and then the dog has to move through those three positions, but the dog is not allowed to move more than a body length, forward or to the side. Just look how smoothly those transitions are taking place. Absolutely no forward movement. Wasn't that fantastic? Let's hear it for Bradley. What a good boy. So now we're going to see more from Mary and Frankie. And they're doing, the technical word is advanced, sit, stand, and down. But we tend to call them positions on the move. So you notice their really smooth transition into the sit. Mary does some heel work around the dog, and then the dog is collected back into position. And then we're going to do another position. Look at that, straight in the down. Absolutely no issues there. What we're hoping to show you is that although collies are prevalent in obedience, as you can see, any breed can enjoy this. Look at that, beautiful into the stand position. The dog must wait without any forward movement and to be collected. Beautiful, well done. So before Mary, we say goodbye to Mary, we just must say big good luck to Mary and all the other competitors in the Obedience Championships this coming weekend in Hall 5. So let's wish Mary and everyone the best of luck. Okay, so we're going to finish with one dog doing retrieve. And of course, we've got to have the last word from our little Frankie. So she's got a massive dumbbell. Off she goes. No problems. And well done. Uh, please join me in thanking the wonderful obedience display team. And I'm now handing to Stanford and Working Trials. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the world of Working Trials. Uh, we won't be doing any heel work because I don't think we could do it quite as well as Mary Ray's just done it. So, working trials is very much derived from police dog work, from dogs tracking, dogs searching for property. So we're going to show you some exercises unique to working trials. Now, one of the exercises we do is called a speak on command. 
There's a young dog, a young shepherd here, Arlo with Sue. He's just 18 months old. And we're going to show you how we teach a young dog to speak. And this is all reward based. So he's just being taught the exercise of the bark. Now, young Becky comes in with Mist, a young border collie, but you'll notice the exercise is done at heel. Needs to be done properly because otherwise we'd end up with the dog barking all the time it did its heel work. Now, if you look away, you'll see Martine is going to lay a track for Charlie, her husband. It's a bit risky taking on track laying. Now, I'd like you to imagine this is a field of grass. This is an area of about 10 acres, which is a couple of football fields. Now, Charlie will get excited about this because he's a Manchester United supporter and he, he had rather a good moment last night, I think unexpected. Now, you've seen the bloodhounds come in here. Now, bloodhounds hunt. Their noses are up and they hunt a personal scent. This dog is going to follow exactly where Martine's walked on this carpet, all right? And that's exactly what we do on grass. And the dog is also going to find the articles that Martine has laid. Now, you see the dog follows exactly, worked on a harness and line so we can control the dog because the dog would want to do this at 50 miles an hour if it could. And I can assure you, it is not easy out here. There we are, first article found. Now this dog, Nikki, has just become a working trials champion. The dog is seven years old, and that's the highest award this dog could get. Charlie, in fact, won twice within about two or three weeks. Now coming up to the second article. There we are. You know how the dog picks the article up, very careful, doesn't swallow it, and on it goes again. Now, if you can imagine how many people have walked in here this morning, this dog is still working where Martine has walked. Now, it was suggested that perhaps I could lay the track, but I did have to point out that would be multitasking, wouldn't it? And I am only a man after all, aren't I? And here we are, up to the end. Well done, Charlie. Okay, now we've shown you the track. Now we're going to show you a property search. Now dogs are taught to retrieve. Then we move that exercise on and we teach dogs to find articles. Now the dog's not looking. This would normally be in long grass. So the dog wouldn't see the articles and it would be worked so the wind would be coming towards us. All right, now this is a young dog, a young what? And there we go. And the dog picks the article up, retrieves, holds it. Note how carefully it holds it. Oh no, it didn't want to take it home, did it? Okay. This is young Bethan, which is a working sheep dog. Second article, carefully held. Now this is extremely foreign, this environment to these dogs. They only work outdoors, a piece of astroturf. Oh, he's got a little keen on the astroturf. And now the last article. There we are, and recovered. Okay, well done, Priscilla. Well done, Bethan, that's very good. Okay, we're now gonna to demonstrate to you a send away. Now, I know the send away was done in the working trial, in the obedience demo, but in working trials, dogs would be sent a greater distance because our arena is larger. Here the dog's gone out, and if you could imagine that could be up to 300 yards. The dog's redirected on the whistle. Very good. Now Becky's just 20, 
which is very young for somebody in our sport. And she's at, at university, doing an equine course. Okay, folks, that concludes the demo for working trials. Thank you very much, much appreciated. Well, let's give them all a big round of applause, folks. You got, we have, if for the obedience of Rally Kerkhoff and Card and her team, as we've just seen, stand forward with the Working Trials team, and Derizio with the Heelwerter Music team, and of course, Leo with the Bloodhounds. So give them a big round of applause as they leave the arena, folks. And if you wish to go and speak to anyone, the dog owners themselves and the dog trainers off on the activity centre in Hall 3. It's just on the left-hand side as you look up from, from this arena down here. Lots of people there ready to show you their dogs, ready to talk about their sport, how you can become involved in it, and uh, even what kind of dog would be more appropriate, perhaps in some instances, uh, for the, the, what you want to do. So just go up there into Hall 3 and have a word with them. Now we're going to have a sh very, very short interlude now, a little interval, and it's going to be about 15 to 20 minutes. If you want to use the restroom or have a wander around, do so, but don't forget, we've got here work to music. The freestyle section is coming up after the interval, so make sure you're back in time for the start. So we'll see you very shortly after the end of the interval, which is scheduled to be at 12.10. So we'll be back for here work to music then, folks. When I first got him, although I knew he was a blood donor, I didn't think he would be as loving and as sociable as he is. Hi, my name is Sarah and this is my rescue dog, Ringo. On a day of donation, we get up, I walk the dogs as normal, um, then get them ready. When we get there, he comes in, we put, um, clip a little area of hair on his neck over his jugular vein, which is where we take the blood from, um, and then we just insert a needle and he donates um, a pint of blood for us. Once he's done, we just lift him down and give him a bowl of food and water. It's just amazing knowing that animals can save lives as humans can with blood. I'd say Ringo is probably the perfect donor for us because each donation can go to at least two patients but probably much more than that. Um, and temperament wise he's always happy to be here, um, he lies perfectly still on the table so he's perfect. The Royal Veterinary College do get thank you letters which they always forward on so it's really nice to see occasionally when we get that email um, from the uh, recipient of the blood with a thank you note and it's just a lovely feeling. He's changed our lives. He and I have that bond that I feel is a very special bond and he's made me so proud. He's changed his own life by coming into a home and also all those um, donations that he's done and the impact that he will have had on other animals' lives. He's just one in a million. He really is. When I was really young, my mum said, do you want a dog? And I said yes. And then we suddenly were driving to go get a dog. I felt like Snoopy was just the perfect dog and I really wanted him because he was really cute. My name's Ollie and this is Snoopy. I like to cuddle him, I like to feed him, and also, especially, I like playing football with him. Yeah, he's my best friend, really.
Ollie became really, really poorly. He was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastemic leukemia. You know, Ollie was three and a half. And then they told us that the treatment for leukemia was three and a half years. He was unable to see friends and family. It was like, wow, that's a lot of his childhood that's been spent in hospital. Snoopy's just been the constant friend that Ollie couldn't have anywhere else, really, because he had to learn to crawl and then he had to learn to walk again. And Snoopy helped him because he had to go out for a walk. I think that encouraged Ollie to be able to, you know, put some more effort into walk, learning to walk again. I kind of feel like he wants me to be able to run with him. So that's why I want to be able to run with him. Even if I was in a wheelchair, I still got to walk him. I always hoped that they would be best friends, but I never, ever in my entire life really thought that they would have the bond that they do together. And I think, you know, it's just a constant friend, always there, no matter what, really. Wherever Ollie is, Snoopy is never far behind. Their bond has just been amazing. He kind of follows him everywhere. It's almost like his protector, really. He normally cuddles up next to me without me asking him. So that kind of tells me that he's my best friend. Millie would be very quiet. She would have her head down and be really withdrawn. She's got Down syndrome, she's got polymer hypertension, low muscle tone and anxiety. Uh, since having Emma, she's totally changed. Uh, as long as she's got Emma in the vicinity, she's great. She's really given her so much more confidence. The worries that we had before we got Emma was that Millie would be kind of left on her own, she wouldn't have a companion. Millie was really scared of dogs. When we went to Dogs For Good, Millie was playing on the climbing frame. We were dropping treats down the slide to Emma on the way home. She said, I like that doggy daddy, she's nice and fluffy, which then started their bond and their journey together. Which one's your favourite dog? Emma, she's my favourite. She is your favourite. Emma and Millie are very coordinated already. They're just growing all the time together. She's really in tune with Millie. Their, their personalities are quite similar. They uh, like their quiet time and that they love to play. They really interact really well. Millie comes home from school. First person she goes to is Emma, straight past dad, past everyone. Emma gives her hugs. What do you do when you come home and see Emma? What do you do with her? I cuddle her. Do you give her big cuddles or little cuddles? Big cuddles, like this. Emma can open doors for Millie. Millie has medication in her drinks. Millie will leave them in places. We don't know where they are. We ask Emma. Emma will go and find it and bring it back to us. What sort of tricks does she do? She gets my cup. She gets your cup. Emma will go up and do a headrest on her when she's out of breath. She just supports her in so many different ways. Yeah. 